Uh, the last couple of times he's played against Melbourne, Frawley really has had his number. That's a nice sight for Tigers fans. The skipper is back. Yeah, and uh, we know that he's uh, a wonderful young player, one of the elite midfielders in the competition. And from all accounts there at Richmond, he's really growing quickly into that leadership role as well. So he missed just the one week after hyperextending his knee against Fremantle. It was quiet against the Cats. He watched the Port Power win by the Tigers last weekend. He returned this afternoon. Revolt, he kicked five goals, one last weekend. But as Tim said, he has struggled against James Frawley in the past. So a great opportunity for the Tigers this afternoon against the side who have struggled really against anyone. Just the one win against the Giants. And a win today, it does really entrench the side in the eight. They got off to a great start last week. They went on the road against Port Adelaide and they really set that win up with a really strong first quarter. You look at that side, Vickery back into the team as well in the forward pocket. And interestingly, Maguana, I mean, he's been, had, he's been a wonderful player for them since they turned him around from the defender to the forward. He's their number one target inside yeah. 50. I mean, they go to him more than they go to Revolt, more than they go to Vickery. And Edwards has become a really important midfielder for them too. And Chris Newman is a late out. He was uh, reported as ill, so the four changes. Vickery, Cochin, White and D gets an opportunity. Let's go to Lingy. He's with Damien Hardwick. Well, Damien, on paper, it says it's an easy win, but there's no such thing in AFL footy, is there? No, there isn't. Yeah, they're capable of playing some good footy, Melbourne, as we've seen. Any side that kicks 12 goals in a quarter can't play. So we're going to come prepared to play. You know, they're going to come out hot and firing, so we're going to make sure we come out and do the same. And probably a really great test for the, the professionalism of the, of the group, making sure they get off to a good start against uh, possibly a weaker team. Yeah, no doubt. I think the, the thing you worry about, you, know, you, you have to worry about these games, it's all about the process. You know, we're not there to win the game in the first quarter. It's all about two-goal lead, four goals, six. That's what good sides do. So we're just going to make sure we get our process right, the ability to control the ball, for us to take care of itself. Appreciate your time, mate. All the Thanks, best. Thank you. They come, become pessimists by nature, don't they, coaches? Uh, they were asking a lot from this bloke today, Orange Stevenson. He was at uh, Geelong last year, played eight games for them, really forced out because of the riches they had in that department. McIntosh went there, Vardy West, and Blitzarms, who's been really good for Geelong this year as well. And he'll share the ruck duties this afternoon with Vickery. You talk about a lot of these guys getting an opportunity late. He's been dominant in the VFL for so long. And now Nick Floston gets his opportunity, the 19-year-old, All-Australian under-18, fourth game this afternoon. And you wanted to highlight something from last weekend. This is his work rate. You don't often see this in young players. Just uh, keep an eye on him. He's running on that outer wing, a chase. He doesn't actually apply a really heavy tackle, but he just puts enough pressure on the kick so that the players downfield actually get a good read on it and they're able to clear that. And uh, he's going to be a wonderful player. He really has got a very rounded game for a youngster. He's got a great role medal in Trent Cochin to emulate and James Magna, he gets his first opportunity for the Ds this afternoon. So it's all about the Tigers trying to entrench themselves in the eight with a win over Melbourne on Sunday afternoon football. Of the coin. Good luck, Trent. We got uh, Jim tossing the coin. Jack, Here are you're nine, away, eh? New call. Heads or tails? Tails is the call. It's tails. Both share guys. a jumper number in a draft. Number two, those two, Tringo and Cochin. It's a big day for young Jack. I mean, he's uh, struggled this year. He's had an injury and he's just back into the team. And as Hamish and Tim talked about. A lot of changes to Melbourne again, a lot of changes to Richmond, but uh, their changes are for a different reason, you feel. White the sub again today as he was a couple of weeks ago. Davey not sub today. He has been in the last three matches he's played for Melbourne and his match will be interesting today, but you feel like Richmond's got an enormous advantage in the midfield, don't you? You do, and uh, as we've already discussed, that's a real weak area of Melbourne's game and uh, it just puts so much pressure on every other part of their game. I reckon, and we've got a little bit of an insight with Damien Hardwick when he was speaking to Lingy too about, as a coach, you're always worried about where the players' minds might be at when they're playing one of the lesser performed sides in the competition. And, you know, have they already started to think about maybe preserving themselves a little bit for next Saturday's game against Essen? And, and I think Damien Hardwick would be sitting up in the coach's box right now just wondering, you know, what sort of a start is he going to get from his player today? So fantastic on the road last week against Port Adelaide, but... Will they come to play early today? Lingy, in a couple of words, what are you looking forward to here? 
Well, I've noticed that Melbourne have gone with the real hard bodies in the middle of the ground. Nathan Jones, as expected, is in there with Jordy McKenzie, probably play a role. But they've thrown Magnus straight in there. They want a fierce contest here. Richmond, they'll be looking to get on top through the middle part of the ground and really set a standard for the rest of the team by pumping the ball inside 50 as many times as they can this quarter. Opening bounce here at the MCG. Good crowd. Richmond up against the D's. Melbourne has not won an opening quarter this year. They haven't kicked the first goal in a match this season. And the Tigers haven't lost an opening quarter. So you would think they've got a chance of being in front of quarter time, but there's a long way to go. We know Martin got the first little kick out. Ellis down the line. Tie on. Tie on. Going to grounds at Rance. It was. Little handball back from Evans and then Turlick's kick round the corner. Cochin going in hard and also Dawes and a boundary throw in. McKenzie's gone to Delito. Uh, last week against Port Adelaide, it was Corns that went to Delito, but he was just able to burn him off. McKenzie's actually a lot quicker than uh, Corn, so that will be an interesting matchup between those two. So Stevenson and Jamar. Jamar again back in the team. Another, and here's Edwards, who is important as we talked about before the match. And he's stolen the ball and gone, just comes back inside. Now a chance for the D's, the man that was so prolific last week, Delidio, uh, just losing his feet in the end, allowing Dunn to punch it over. Was McGuan, who played his 100th last year, started in the defensive six for the Tigers and now has become such a target for the Tigers in their attacking zone. So J Mar, one of the five ins for the D's against the old man in... Oren Stevenson, a couple of old bulls. They'll be going at it all afternoon. Jones loses his feet, gathers and goes wide to Turlick. He just settles. Edwards approaches and he misses his target in the skipper. And that's a really interesting matchup too. Jones has actually gone to Cochin, so he's playing what appears to be a role on Cochin, and generally he's the player that's been tagged. So obviously they're just trying to give him a little bit more breathing space, give him another assignment and see if they can't nullify some of the strengths of Richmond too through Cochin. Saw Cochin shake his hand before the match, which I thought was just fantastic. He's an absolute gentleman, and uh, Jones reciprocated. Taps got courageous, good mark, didn't know what was coming. Hurley on him. So Taps got controls, and it was a poor kick in the end. He sort of controlled it off the boot, but Morris to Ellis, back to Jackson. Jackson with that familiar gate of his and then back to Morris and Morris kick is a good one and gives Hurley a real chance but it taps got again doing well there for the second time backing back and then giving Basher something to go on with and a boundary throw in. Garland has gone to Jakey King too and that, that's a big rap for Jake King because Garland is one of those players that generally goes to the most dangerous small forward of the opposition. Little chance here for the Demons over the top. Turlick they can Steady themselves. Garland, who was so outspoken during the week, said he's embarrassed himself and the club the way they're going at the moment. Big fly was from Dawes, who crashed on through. And then to half forward for the Tigers, Strauss knocked it to Jones. And he goes long. The only option is gone. It'll bounce one and settle for him. Now, a short ball is on. Dawes, the target. He's found. Streaming inside. Evans is on. And then he just gets caught up. So... What a great start for Dawes. The tie's got numbers all around the ball. Grigg, a long ball, Vickery in. He's got Seller covered. His hands are good. A big Dawes target, tight. isn't he, Tim? He is a good target. And one out like that, he's going to be too oh, big for you. Seller. But this is where the problem started. And yeah, right Dawes there. actually swung right around, expecting that somebody might be moving downfield. He wanted to deliver the ball straight away. There was no one there. He had to come back seconds. at that stage. The Richmond players, there were four that had got to him and uh, they were able to win the ball back. He's been reliable for the Tigers this year. 8-2 from set shots to get the first of the afternoon for the Tigers. Just offline. When Dawes did the right thing as a forward, that's exactly what you want a forward to do at that part of the ground, is to move. Because as soon as you move, everybody else is forced to move at the same time. And they're still trying to get that fluency in the way they play Melbourne, but there was just nobody there. So done to himself, and then we know he's a long kick, and that's exactly what he does to centre wing. Took his big fly from the back. They had the numbers, Melbourne, but uh, Ellis stood up really well, and uh, Jones's handball back to Turlick. Good tackle, Martin. And then 
trying to break through Jones and again a great front on tackle so some good stuff here from both teams that was Edwards in too Bruce and uh, just talked about in pre-game about how rounded his play has become he's averaging 20 disposals he gets a lot of contested possession more contested possession than non-contested possession so he's become a really good midfielder for him his father of course has a big role at the North Adelaide Footy Club in South Australia and they're going great guns Cotchen Jones and Cotchen Tim talked about the fact they're going to go head to head today that will be exciting quick kick forward by Jones and marked by Davey bit of a day for Davey today first time he started in a long long time it was a beautiful kick to Howe so we just sort of wait for Howe to take his weekly hanger <laughs> over the top finds Evans who gets and goes now can he find a D's jumper inside 50 he can and it's found the belly of Gorn so Gee, McKenzie's still on there. And, and McKenzie just... did the right thing then, too, because he's tagging Deledio. As soon as they broke into their forward half, Melbourne, he took off into the space, and he's trying to expose Deledio. And that's good. That's exactly what you want him to do. That's what he would have been instructed to do, run into that space. But they've just got to find him a couple of times. So six goals so far this year from his four outings for Max Gorn, trying to kick the first goal of the afternoon for either side. Won't score, in fact... We give the football back to the Tigers. In terms of their aggression, they've started this game well, Melbourne. So Floston over the top to Revolt, who's a long way from home. Mentioned his battles with James Frawley since they went so close together in the draft. And he struggled to kick big bags against the D's. 12-23 in the last 10 matches. Two goals, eight last year in a Coleman year for Revolt. Grigg, he's been so good since coming over from the Blues. He's only missed the one game, Hamish, and Hooley hasn't missed any since coming over. And there is Basher. So those two guys have been great pickups. I mean, they were fringy pickups at the time from both Carlton and Essen, weren't they? And yet they've been able to establish themselves in an improving team really well. Bachelor's kick is a beauty to centre wing. Ellis probably should have marked it. Talking of blokes that play a lot of footy, he's only missed the one game, Ellis, since he started last year. Looks like Revolt's trying to bring uh, Frawley right up the ground as well so that they can actually take him away from becoming that third up player. They can isolate then Vickery and also McGuan. So Jamar give him the win. Evans tackled by Hooley, taken to ground pretty quickly. Going nowhere. Bruce, you mentioned Sean Grigg and how well he's been going for the Tigers and that, that extra depth that he's given. He received all six Brownlow votes in last last year against the Demons. Prolific ball getter, and as we know, but huge games against the Dees last year. Well, Ellis right in front of Lingy right now just kicks the ball forward for the Tigers. He's going the way of the Demons. Dunn has the job on McGuan. McGuan there being penalised for not throwing the ball directly back to the... Interesting play, though, didn't he? Like, last week, he was actually playing as a as, as, a, as a midfielder, and... Did uh, he run with Ablett for a while last week? He did, yeah, yeah. He did early in the game, and uh, Ablett burned him off after a while, but Ablett burns most blokes off, but now this week, he's got a, a defensive role on, on McGuan. So, Lyndon Dunn, who's played pretty yeah, much everywhere, hasn't he, since point. he started with the Ds, fell out of favour for a while... It's the one goal in the season so far. He was going pretty well prior to moving back in defence and 88 goals in his journey from 102 matches. So to get the first on a Sunday afternoon for the Ds. He struck it pretty well. In fact, he struck it really well. The first goes to the way of Melbourne. And, Lee, that, uh, that 50 was given away in front of you. That's the sort of thing that would send a coach spare. Yes, it would annoy Damien Hardwick a little bit. I'm not sure uh, Lyndon Dunn helped, helped his uh, McGuan out at out all there. The throw wasn't that bad, but uh, I suppose they're the little disciplined things you've got to get right. Good enthusiasm then after that goal, too. And you want to see that maintained throughout the course of the afternoon, but it's a good start for you, Melbourne. Well, it's the first time this year they've kicked the opening goal in a match. So they get that first through a 50-metre penalty and a good finish from Dunn. It's very, very early, but there are some good signs if you are a Demon supporter. And you haven't had too many for a fair while. Foley, good to see him back. Grigg, 
uh, Lingy talked about just how well he's played against the D's and then Nicholson going back to Magna to Evans now Evans normally good with ball in hand that's uh, right to the top of the square doors at the back but well done coming across the front there was Chaplin and forcing the spoil that's great play by Chaplin going back into the unknown that's exactly what your teammate wants you to do become that third bloke up and affect the spoil and he did that effectively He's got Jetta Chaplin, so he's a bit like Garland, Timmy. That was high. I mean, Chaplin can play on the tools and the smalls, a bit like Garland at the other end. That's right. And Dunn, who had McGuan before, now has Edwards too, so he's having to adapt. So D, who came into the team for Newman, and uh, gets the ball to Ellis at half back. So Ellis, careful kick, but no, not a great result. They, well, was that touched on the way through? I thought it certainly touched. Actually, it did look as if it was touched after he kicked it. Edwards has got it. Back to D, who's been an emergency so many times in the last couple of years. Gets his opportunity today. Comes in for Chris Newman, who was a late out to Martin. What a brilliant footballer he is at his best. And then they just work it down the line to Hooley. So carefully at the moment, the Tigers. Vickery. Oh, Max. Thanks, mate. Move it on. Play on. And now to half forward. So... The wrestle, McGuan doing the wrestling this time with Seller. Jackson, boundary line too close. Lee, looking forward to getting an update on your views on Nick Floston, who comes with such big raps. Yeah, really like the look of him, Hamish. He just he plays footy the right way. He's, he's hard at the ball, but he really values the defensive side of his games. He's laid some incredible tackles already in his career. I'm going to keep a very close eye on him. So Martin gets that. After a poor handball coming out. Well done, Silla, that time against McGuan. Nahas, but he just couldn't do Strauss for pace. I thought he might have, and done doing it at both ends. So the goal at the other end, and a good mark there, and then waits the kick, but not a great kick. It was a poor one. Yeah, that's and 52 just a minute. And Revolt able to get to the right spot, Frawley wanting it over the back. You'd be hating that if you're Frawley, though, oh, wouldn't yeah. you? You're playing on Revolt. You've got control of the ball. You're actually making an attacking move. You're running to space, and the kick doesn't reach you, and you bring your direct opponent into the play. Sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> well, Hamish talked about the fact two goals eight last year against the Ds, one three and one five, and this is the one team he's been inaccurate. Now, he's had a lot of shots from this spot against Melbourne, and that's well, a pretty good kick, actually, but just missed. So if he'd done eight of those last year and just missed, you'd say, well, nothing wrong with his kicking. It it's, just where, stayed, it's where he's getting them. Yeah, and it just stayed straight, that kick, didn't it? I mean, generally, it, it pushes a little bit from right to left, but it just didn't. It just stayed on track. It's funny, you bring up the history of his inaccuracy against Melbourne. The previous four rounds, he's kicked 12 goals one. So the Tigers, they're going to win it back here. Floston. Brandon Ellis. Back to Ellis. So a little one over the top. They can build from here, the Tigers. Jake King, interesting article on Jake, the Q&A with Matty Lloyd in The Age today, talking about how he was told he was never going to play under 18s, and he was no good for the VFL. He's just approaching 100 games at the highest level. Turlick to Seller, intercepted almost. Jones did a good job for the Ds. Now to Garland and Jones of the other variety for the Demons. Nathan Jones, advantage. So Tupas wide to Jones. Matt Jones back inside, and they're going to get... Clear only momentarily. It'll come back via King now to Ellis and Ellis over the top. Well weighted ball, hard up against the boundary outer side. Grig. Outstanding forward pressure there by mm. Richmond. They looked like they were out about three times in Melbourne. So a little one to Jackson, who Daniel, you think Daniel might just search for a target and now decides he's going for home. The only knock really, Tim, on Jackson's game is disposal by foot. Accuracy, perhaps, in front of goal. Yep, you could never in question, in question his endeavour and his commitment and the aggression that he shows. Good view of what is in front of him. And, well, that's the knock. Jimmy, over your line, please. Thanks, mate. Didn't get close, did he? Um... He's always good for the length, isn't he? It's just as Amy said, the accuracy. Hi there, Oren. So Magna got votes in his very first game. Brownlow votes, that is, and uh, played 17 matches last year. Jamar, good mark. Hi, 
wants Jones. Put him under some pressure, but Jones had called for it. Putting it wider. Evans back to Tringo. Be great to see him have a high disposal match and a good disposal match. That one, not a great kick. Put a lot of pressure on the Demons, but they get it back through Tringo. Belting forward, doors, front spot. And Howe had a real chance. Rance played it so well to Ellis, to Jackson. Ellis wants a bounce, and he got it. And then he was legged. Cotchen on the up. Hurley's on the right side for him. He's going to use Martin. And then Martin with a lovely soft kick to set a half forward. And then McGuan taking them on. That was a good tackle by Magna. He did well. He held him up for the moment. And then Nahas back to Ellis. Ellis floats one. A one-on-one. Good battle. Jake King and Garland. Garland well done to Frawley. And then King gets to Frawley. But Frawley gets to Tringo. And Tringo getting a little bit of the ball. And that's not where you want to be kicking the ball to Jake King. A one-on-one in the air when he's up against Garland. He's a lot taller than Jake King. He's very good in the air as well. This is where they're having trouble, Melbourne, actually moving the ball from this part of the ground and finding their way through the maze of Richmond players. So Nicholson now, product of the Uni Blues and the amateurs, just swings it wide. That's OK, but there's got to be somebody else that's read the play. Now, Dawes is trying to make a really long lead. And that was the only option in the end. It's cut off by Ellis, so Ellis did a good job of it in front of the bigger man. He's had it 11 times already, Ellis. Now to D and back to Ellis. And they might just go again here through Foley, who got through last week so well after spending so much time in the rehab room. And it's great to see him back in the yellow and black. And to Chaplin, who played against his old foe, or his old firm last weekend. Now to the hot spot. What can the Ds do here? Revolt. Well, Garland did a good job of it in the end. It's going to stay in for McGuan and then just gets kicked over. Already you're watching Melbourne play and there's just not enough pressure on that kick that's going from mid-ground into their defensive 50 and that's been a problem for them all year. Just putting enough pressure on that kick. And, you know, if this keeps going in this way, Richmond will just wear them down wider numbers. Delidio's kicked a goal out of nowhere. They'll review this for a touch on it. Score review, please. So good uh, snap from Delidio. He's pretty confident, I think. That's clearly... Yeah, for sure, it's a goal. A goal, isn't it? Review completed. It's worth trying to... That's so clever there from Delivio yeah. too. Just really a half good. chance. We know that McKenzie's gone to him. He's going to have to make the most of a lot of those half chances, but such a clever player and great leadership he showed last week too against Port Adelaide on the road. He's in the absolute prime, Tim. 26 years of age, 180 games. I mean, it, it won't get any better than this. He's right mm. at the peak of his powers, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, his physical peaks yeah. and, and uh, the maturity as a player, understanding the game. And being able to fight... I mean, one thing that has been a trouble for him is fighting his way through tags and Tim the only way he's going to get better and take it to the next level I think is to drive the rest of the group to get better as we know it's always uh, easier or, or you become a better player when you're surrounded by great players and I think if Delidio drives his entire team to get better he'll just rise again on top of that that's a really good point point. and having Cochin in his corner being able to do that too Ling is going to make a difference absolutely agree and extraordinary to think he hasn't missed in 123 games. He hasn't missed since round 18, 2007, which is madness considering the brutality of this game now, particularly where he plays. Yeah, no, that says a lot for his durability and uh, his physical conditioning. So again, Jamar just muscles his way around. The man that we're speaking about gets hold of it and then just gets wrapped up by a few. Jones underneath it all. It was good last week. The Lidio is acting captain. So too was Nathan Jones. Both had a week with the open bracket C, closed brackets next to their name. Magna check for blood. Gee, you don't hear that too often. When they, when they, no, that's okay. Normally they're on their way, aren't they? So nothing much there. And speaking of the Magna, he gets it out in tight where he does his best work. This will be the interesting stage for Melbourne now. Jetta. Now they've been challenged so hard on the scoreboard. Let's see how they can respond. Dawes has grabbed it and held it. So what a big kick coming out for Dawes. Second match for the Ds. 
their prized recruit, I guess, of all those recycled players, this was the guy that came from the big club with the biggest reputation at the best stage of his career. And now he's got a chance to kick a goal for the first time in Melbourne colour. So this is a big, big kick. These are the ones you sort of remember, I reckon. First real chance. Well done. And Melbourne get their second and Dawes gets his first. So he's got to the ball. He made yep. one mistake, obviously, when the ball was smothered, but... Uh, but he's, uh, he's made a reasonable start. He has. He pushes hard to the ball. He's a big worker. He had one of the best engines at Collingwood, though. He was right up there with the midfielders in terms of his endurance, so he can cover the ground. So he talked about his work rate. Uh, there's his numbers, Tim, the doors. We've got our eye on a lot of these players today. Just plotting and measuring how far they're running and working. So the D's just hoping he can find that 2010 form when he kicked 30 in that premiership year and was really at the peak of his powers. He's still just 24 years of age, so much footy ahead of him. You'd expect those numbers to be up around 14 by the end of the game. I mean, that's what, you know, Cloak and Nick Revolt and those guys are doing as centre-half forwards and key forwards. So Davey just almost, and then Foley wrapped it back up and brought it in, got it out to Martin. So a couple of teenagers out there. Jimmy Tumpus is one of them back in. Plays game four this afternoon. Comes from the SNFL. Went four in the draft last year. Quickly they work it. Revolts the target. Frawley, as always, just in his pocket. Davey, little slap to himself. Has the pace and then the agility to double back. Gives it to Frawley. And then McKenzie. Well, it was Delidio who just floated in. And again, he can just... Set the Tigers off again. Short ball is perfect to Floston. And little one to Newman, who's just got a yard or so on Strauss. And then McGuan had to sort of try and recover it. It worked out pretty well for Vickery, who's offline. Edwards is already up to eight. He's been busy in this first quarter. So done out wide. Turlick's got it. Short. OK. Jetta. Agree with your comments before the game, Tim. Sort of a big moment for Jetta the next sort of few weeks. It's got a lot of ability, I think. That wasn't a good kick. Cochin just dropped in front of Davey. So Cochin on the burst and then measures it and King's got it, lays out. It was a great kick from Cochin. And the push-up, Kingy found it. And there's a difference, Bruce, that. just the ball use. Right Melbourne in, turning the ball over right through Jetta. Cochin on the turnover just goes bang, right lace up. out to Jake King. Right and Melbourne just don't have that composure and that ability to hit their targets, and it's ending up making it really hard for themselves. For sure. So, Jakey, 94 games today. He's been hitting the scoreboard this season, particularly in the last two weeks. He's kicked seven in his last two. He's given it a long thump with a hook and hit the post. It's a good kick. He's unique, isn't he? I, I, <laughs> He's a real character. I mean, you guys, I mean, you and Lingy, Tim, has there been anyone quite like him? I mean, he's... He start, no, he started as a back pocket type player and uh, he was shifted forward by Terry Wallace and he really loved his aggression and then when Damien Harwick came to the club, he, he, he enjoyed his aggression too, but, you know, he's, he's more than just a gimmick type player. He's become really effective. Floston to Chapman who helicopters the ball forward Frawley had to take a chance and he did Tumpus good to see him back well done by McGuan and can't quite bring it back and now James Seller in the back pocket wants to kick it as hard and high as he can in a familiar scene nothing really to go to a lot of Tigers jumpers around the place Hooley inside to Batchelor on his right side kick not perfect little chance for Grigg now to Martin tries to don't argue and loses the football while doing it Nahas crashes through Taps got into him when I say gimmick I'm, I'm not trying to make fun of him but yeah. you know people were laughing about his you know being the push-up king and all that sort of stuff and but there's a lot more talent to him and he's such an aggressive little warrior type player and I'm sure his teammates love having him around. He kicked 25 goals in 2011, was restricted last year with the injury, had so many operations at the end of the year, 10 goals last year, and already he's kicked 11 from his six outings this year. So 
Yeah, they're good numbers. They're good numbers, aren't they? I mean... He's got that strut, hasn't he? I mean, he'd be a great jockey because he's just got that attitude. Don't he? <laughs> just one of those really cocky little jockeys that, you know, wins the big group one on Derby Day. He's just got it. Right. Lingy, at some stage, you've got to give us your best Jake King story. You must have run into him a couple of times on the field. Oh, absolutely, Bruce. I'll save one up. I might even uh, ring me old mate Richo and get a few of the beauties from him. <laughs> so Matt Jones wide, bachelor for the Tigers intercepts and again sets them up. This time it's Floston who goes forward. The long ball, Vickery has to sit, couldn't quite. Couple of demons to beat. Frawley waits for it, gets through the tackling Jackson and then gets away from Vickery. The handball through the middle. This time it's Jetta. Jetta with a handball to Evans. Now they need to be good here. They've got nothing really inside forward 50. How is caught? And they've coughed it up again, the Ds. So D to Floston to Ellis. And they work it again. The numbers are all in the Tigers' favour. If they can just get it over the top, they work it to Martin now. He tries to get around Jetta and does get through Jetta. Now it's the one-on-one deep. McGuan had to beat Dunn and Dunn good. He did well. Nahas, Strauss. And now it's a bit of a battle. And not coming out. That's a problem, isn't it? When you're Melbourne and you can't find a target in that mid part of the ground, the ball gets turned over. All your players are actually starting to run to an attacking position. They're offside then, and uh, Richmond are finding their way through that. That's all those spaces left behind. Foley's quick kick to Foley. So I reckon the key Melbourne defenders so far, Tim, are doing really well in the one on ones, but it just mounts up as the That's game right. goes on. It's weight of numbers, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Seller, one of those. Great that kick. was a good kick. Now, Davey should be able to turn his men here and go. And that's the important one, and he's done it really well. And this is a promising start for Dawes here. I mean, at last, if you've got a guy that leads up, you get some structure, don't yep. you? And, and I was watching him, too. He actually made three leads then, Dawes. So he actually really worked over uh, his direct opponent. And eventually, he found that right space. And the right bloke had the ball in his hands, too. I mean, we know that Davey's a very good kick. Well, another important kick. I mean, I, you might think I'm being a little dramatic, but these are big moments, I reckon, for Dawes. Early in his career at Melbourne, and he's done the right thing straight over the goal up by head again. He's kicked two goals. Well, before he played his first game, he did a press conference with Mark Neal, and Mark Neal talked about the fact that he was coming into play, and he jokingly said, oh, look, I'm going to kick 10. That was a couple of weeks ago, mm. so he might have just gone a bit <laughs> early. Um, you can visualise Mitch Clark and Chris Dawes yes. together. I mean, that, that suddenly looks a different yep. team, doesn't it? Well, he moves around so much, Chris Dawes. So once he picks up the pattern of play, and at the moment it's really hard to find what the pattern of play of Melbourne is because they, they don't really have a deliberate way of playing. But that's a great start. Nearly uh, already travelled three kilometres and uh, he is working over his direct opponent and you know, they just need to get enough ball supplied down there because at the moment they've got a winner in their forward line. So the Ds have three goals and the Ds have all four goals. So Dawes has two, Dunn and Delidio, the single goal scorer for the Tigers. And the Tigers look good here on the wing. A little one to Hawley. Now he looked at McGuan, stepped back inside, didn't like it, looked too far. And Cochin provides the lead this time. The kick's perfect. Ellis almost got it from Cochin and he... Thinks better of it. Short ball inside back to Hooley. Had 15 now, Ellis. This is a bit dangerous. Works out okay. Delidio did a good job in front of McKenzie. Play on, you're around, Brett. Play on. Off the line, called to play on. Now the deep ball, the penetrating ball. Inside 50, McGuan going back. Garland got a fist on it. Might just settle for Jake. Jake King goes to Nahas. Nahas, well, he had a runner going past. He didn't want to go through, and it does. It's a good call, Hamish. I, re I reckon Robin Nahas would be thinking, I'm not saying he's selfish, but he needs to hit the scoreboard. A couple of years ago, his numbers were so good, and he's sort of been left slightly behind in the pecking order. And uh, small forwards are there to do constructive things and to kick goals, and one small forward gave it to another. Yeah, he's sort of fallen out of favour a little bit yep, this year, hasn't he, sure. Robin Nahas? But uh, Garland was the player that actually went at the ball. It was his fist that hit the ball, and his direct opponent then, Jakey King, so clever at ground level, stayed down and then set that goal up. And uh, Ellis, have a look at those numbers. 16 disposals in the first quarter playing on the wing. And he's one of the two teenagers in the team for the Ds today and one for, uh, rather, for the Tigers today. High tackle, Vickery getting McKenzie. He's got the big job today on Delidio. And then Magna, that kick to half forward. 
Bit of a wrestle there, Dawes and Rance. He's had his hands full, Rance. Taps got, can he turn both of them? Hurley takes him up the front. And he's holding the footy. I think it's a fair call in the end. He took them on. Whether it was a legitimate tackle or not, we might argue. But uh, he got him down. So Rance. Hey Thanks, Chris. You got it. Thanks, Alex. Morris is on here. He's got him, Tim. So a lot of space for Morris to work in. And the short kick to Revolt. So a couple of times Revolt in the back half taking marks. That's a beautifully way to kick to Flossen. And then short to King. And not many things beat Jakey, the push-up king, but the siren did just there. But for the first time this year, Richmond lose an opening turn and Melbourne win one. So we might have something going here. It's 16 to 8. So Richmond trailing. We've had six scoring shots to three, so double the scoring shots. It's a two-point margin here at quarter time. So, Cam, down to you. I mean, Melbourne, how have you seen the way they've gone about it and the way they've been going forward in that first quarter? Well, they've actually done reasonably well, Bruce. They've, uh, for the six entries they've had, they've been able to kick three goals. They just need to work out a way to generate more entries. They need to win more balls through the middle of the ground. And that's got to start with their defensive work through the middle of the ground. They've got to cut off the uncontested ball that Richmond have got at the moment. Alice, Grigg, uh, these types of players are just getting far too much of the ball. Edwards is getting far too much of the ball. They've got to stop that supply through the middle of the ground, start winning a bit of ball themselves, and pump it inside 50 because Chris Dawes is actually looking dangerous. When they get it in there, they're scoring. They just need more of it. That's a good point from Lingy, and they've defended really brilliantly too because Richmond have had it in there attacking 50, 15 times to the six. And the thing that has been different about their performance this week as opposed to last week, Melbourne, has been their tackle count. They had just 39 tackles last week against the Gold Coast. That was for the entire game. They've had 18 in the first quarter, so they actually are putting a fair amount of pressure on Richmond. They do need to get on the one page, though, Melbourne, because there was a time in that first quarter where they switched play to the outer flank, and there was no other player on that side of the ground, so no one had read the play about where they had to then position themselves for the next part of the ball movement. So is that effort to more strategy? It's I mean, a bit. Of, well, I think it's I think it's effort, and I think it's understanding the game and. You know, instinctively, players who are playing in really good teams do that, but Melbourne, they just need to make sure that once they gain possession of the ball, they've got to have those outlet-type players that they can actually direct the ball to. Without being condescending, I reckon they would have taken that scoreboard before the match, 18 to 16 a quarter time. So inside 50 is 15 to 6 in favour of Richmond, and total disposal is 110 to 69, but surprisingly, the D's by two points. As we start the second stanza of the afternoon, again, Jay Maher and Oren Stevenson, the two big men. This time it's the Ds that get first hands on it. Jones couldn't win it cleanly. Jay Maher might have just to do a bit of roving work here. He's ridden into the ground by Grigg. I mean, you can win a game without uh, levelling the inside 50s. We saw that in last year's grand final. We saw that yesterday too at Etihad Stadium, Hamish, when... Uh, Brisbane Lions went in 21 times less than Essendon, but you've got to be super efficient once you get there. So Foley... He leads Turlick to the ball, but Turlick was able to drag him down. Pins Foley in the end. So six inside 50s for three goals. Remarkable efficiency. This time Taps got the target. Not able to take it cleanly. Taps got one of these young demons with so little experience. In fact, there's 13 players for the demons today under 50 games, five of them have played less than 10 games. j doing the ruck work. He's had a few more years in a Demons jumper. Stevenson. And now Cotchen got it from Edwards and then bursts away to centre-half forward. Good one-on-one -on -one contest. King and Garland, we've talked about that. Jones got King high. So he's too far out to goal here, King, but he's got a couple, three leads now. He hasn't got the handball to give from the back well I'd say he's too far out to goal yep. he doesn't think that he now. might just pull his kick a bit any guy that can do 303 push ups I reckon has got a chance I guess from anywhere so I shouldn't have counted him out and bang he goes and times it beautifully and the push up king proves me wrong bang goal that's well, a big he, kick for a little man well he's uh, 
He said he'd make a good jockey. He'd be a good band of weight boxer too. I mean, look, he'd be a lot of good things. And right now he's a very good footballer. You know the most impressive thing, though? He came out of the square then. It was a one-on-one duel, so he started deep at full forward against Garland. And Garland affected the spoil, but he almost went to ground, whereas Jakey King actually, he was so well balanced, he stayed on his feet, he was able to win the ball back, and he didn't play for that free kick, he just got hit, taken high. Yeah, Mark, you said he'd be a, a good jockey, I reckon he'd be like Crasher Callow, or the <laughs> pumper, he'd be aggressive, you reckon, on, oh, yeah. on top. So he kicks his first of the afternoon, kicks the Tigers third and they get their noses in front here Jackson missed his target, it was Ellis he wanted who was prolific in the first term had 16 disposals Richmond's three right goals now have come from the back stoppages, back. the clearances as well so that's a part of Melbourne's game that they're going to have to tighten up just to stop those players getting free on the outside, it was Cochin that actually got on the outside last time after a handball from Edwards over the top the third man just knocked it down and suddenly Magna kicks it Inside 50 for the D's. Bachelor did a good job and Taps got read it well and puts it to the top of the square. Doors with Rance in his back. He was. Davey oh, he he picks it up, takes it on, kicks the goal and the D's reply quickly. The D's are back in front. You would be filthy on that, Hamish. If you were at Ford, you've just won the free kick at the top of the square. As we see, just a little bit of a skirmish developing here. Dawes would be trying to work his way into a bit of form and get a bit of confidence. <laughs> Davey doing the same thing. He's just thinking to himself as he's lying on the ground there. <laughs> I've got three. I'm not right going to miss this one. Right out now, guys. Neville, wait, go. Wait, go. He's a little bit sore after that too, Dawes. Uh, Rance came crashing down in on top of him. Well, Davey might need a goal more than Dawes, I reckon, right now, don't you? No, it's probably good for his confidence, too. And he started OK, Davey, and so the Ds have... <laughs> talk about that efficiency going inside 50. What is it? Uh, four goals from, what, seven oh, inside 50? Oh, pinned on his side. Thank you. So He's a free kick. I mean, definitely a free kick there. Clever kick in the end by Davey, but I don't think anyone loves the advantage rule, do they? j A Ford doesn't, in those circumstances. <laughs> He's trying to bullock his way out oh, and the ball up. The advantage rule uh, is good through the middle of the ground when yeah. it's an obvious piece of play where they can play on and they can uh, really take the game through the middle of the ground. But that sort of thing, Chris Dawes, he wants to go back and slot that one. Well, Lingy, you're an old full forward. You would have hated that in your day in the under-18s. Oh, absolutely filthy I would have been there. I would have been having a few words to uh, Aaron Davey there. Just uh, leave that one for me, thank you. Can we, can we put our hat on from our Lee Matthews? Why can't we stop advantage inside the 50 spot? circle. I mean, it's easy to do, so no advantage given inside the forward 50. Hi, Johnny McKenzie. Any response, Tim? Think about it. I'm just having a think about it. I'll, I'll listen to you on radio tomorrow morning. And it, it'll take me that long to formulate an idea. It doesn't take Andy that oh, long. Man, so Garland gets it. Just McKenzie. Back to the AFL wanting that continuous flow and whether or not they stop it inside 50, I suppose. But they love that flowing football, don't they? But you're entitled to the advantage at any part of the ground, though, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'd, I mean, you should be. I'd stop it inside the 50, and we wouldn't have that situation there. King and Jetta, and then Morris, good kick. And Floston. He goes backwards to Chaplin, and then he's got a runner with a bit of space in Bachelor. He gets... Corralled only momentarily by Howe, who's a long way from the forward 50. He's the leading goal scorer for the D's this year, and he's doing it all over the ground this afternoon. Back to Chaplin on the right boot this time to Floston, who Hi plays on. on quickly, and inside he goes. So Ellis is having a fun afternoon at the MCG. And then that's just perfect. McGuan, the leader, the kick, absolutely perfect. Hits the chest. Aaron, clear right out. There's just not enough pressure on those kicks outside 50, though, from Melbourne again. Like, they didn't work hard enough to spread to cover the Richmond players. Well, and then that here. final kick that goes inside 50, well, not nearly enough pressure on that kick. Seconds. I mean, the best sides put pressure on that kick, so that kick becomes a difficult kick to hit. So, to get the lead back for the Tigers, the Demons by a couple of points. And McGuant doesn't strike it as he would have liked. Started well left and distance a problem as well. And rushed through. This is a surprising statistic, isn't it, to learn that uh, McGuan has been the number one favoured target for Richmond in their forward line. I mean, most people would immediately think Jack Revolt. They've taken a lot of emphasis away from Jack. 
by introducing McGuan, and sometimes Jack's played that unselfish role where he's really almost played as a decoy in their forward line at times this year. We're coming into today, Tim, McGuan, 13 goals, Revolt at 24, so they've been the leading two goal kickers, but nearly twice, a good tackle there. Straight up, up. From Chaplin no, ben, on Nicholson. Wing it. Up. So That's then Chaplin short, so holes appearing now, Hurley. It's just too far out to goal. The last time I said that, King kicked one, but Hooley's another five, ten metres out. He's just going to sit it up about ten metres from the goals. Revolt, Vickery, the big flies. Vickery had a fair bit. Nahas just couldn't quite get his uh, foot to us. Well done by Garland. And then Sela hugging the boundary line. Poor kick. Mark taken by Jackson. Jackson about a kick and a bit away from goal. He's studiously looking for options and then Vickery presents just a little bit too hot for Vickery. And Hunt, who's kicked a goal for the D's this afternoon, finds himself on the last line and he turns it over. This time Jackson bullets it to Hooley. He's got a couple at half forward. He goes backwards just a little further to Floston. Got some leads. Deledio is one and that's the target he's found. Called to play on. He'll get back on his right. Used the hand, now to Revolt, and back to D, who again just sets things up over the back. McGuan couldn't quite take it. The defensive work was again good from Garland. So the Ds have been ex tough so far. The Tigers came in heavy favourites, but right now it's the Ds, and Ellis, uh, he's wrestled the lead back, was quick, and... It was a good finish from Brandon Ellis, who's having a terrific afternoon. Listen, he started the afternoon well and lively. He's up to 19 disposals. Now, 17 of those have been uncontested possessions, so he's been working well on the outside. But once again, I know we've spoken a lot about Jake King, but it was Jake King's handball that set that up again. He's such a busy player, a really good worker inside their attacking 50 King. He just wants to be involved in every passage of play. So there's been a similarity about all their goals, hasn't there? There's Jake King again, just uh, getting the crumb and then just working the ball to Ellis. As he did to Nahas earlier, didn't he? Yes, he did, yeah. So two goal assists for King. Oh, man. Wow. Like you can't block with the leg. So that uh, a graphic illustration there is Vickery did it the hard way to get that free kick. Koch and well done. Played it brilliantly, Cotchin on Evans. That is the perfect use of the body, isn't it? And the arms and all the rest of it, just to go you know, hold. And that's the legitimate part of using your body in a marking contest. Here's a free kick and infringement against Chaper. That's just crude. Gee, that was that's crude, isn't it? At, at best, you'd say it was untidy. Oh, painful. Um, Hasn't kicked a goal this yeah, year, Cotchin. Yeah, which is unusual. Um, he only averages about two goals every three games but you feel like he's going to get it over a goal a game not if he kicks like that that was a hook to full forward and Revolt with the big fly he's got the mark Jack Revolt mark didn't appear to be any signal there from Cochin didn't rub the ball on his head or anything we saw last night well, you always in the Geelong game you always give the you always give the champs the benefit of the dust but Revolt Linda. straight in front and Richmond pinch a little break for the first time today. They get a little space between themselves and the Ds. Been six lead changes already, and it's uh, the first time back-to-back -back goals since the Nahas goal at the end of the first, and then King kicked the first in this term with that long bomb, but 11 points. And it's been a good week for the Tigers in regard to the teams above them not having... Big wins. Hawthorne, the only side in the top six coming into the round to have the win. Some losses and then that draw between Fremantle and Sydney. Just looking for Frawley. Frawley just letting him run and jump into that contest and uh, he was shaking his head after Jack took that mark. He knew that he should have gone shoulder to shoulder with Jack all the way. So suddenly, Vickery involved in the middle. Magna, first game back. McKenzie. And now to Jones, and quickly they work it through again. Dawes is the target, Rance. He does the, the mauling work, and in the end, he seemed to have the numbers around at the moment. Tapscott, he's got the ferocious attack on the football, but he tried to do a little bit too much. 
This is where the Demons need to press up here and just lock Richmond in. So Hooley on the bounce to Kotcher. Now that was clever, just ducked inside and then went around on the outside and got away from his man to Martin. Through they come, little slap back from Foley, was hoping to find Martin. And they've turned it over the Tigers after a fast break. So again, the tall men go back, Gorn just... He's been there for a while, signalling for the long ball. He's got the height advantage, and then Chaplin just comes in, drifts, hands on it, doors, does a bit of the roving work, couldn't quite get it cleanly out. Tap Scott again, dishes it this time to Nicholson. On to the left, Bird, a long ball. It's a brilliant ball in the end. It's a long goal from Nicholson. And the Ds, they bring it back to five points. So a bit of scuffling again after a goal from Melbourne. So That's Melbourne. a good turnover, though, yeah. in the centre of the ground then from Melbourne because Cochin looked like him, found some space. He tried to come back inside. I mean, they're not afraid to come back into the corridor rich from when they attack, but they got there in numbers in Melbourne and they were able to force the turnover. For sure, and uh, this inside 50 and goal count is unbelievable, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> They've been effective and efficient when they've got there. Just a big body of doors there, just uh, creating a little bit of space. They can't clear the ball. And this is a wonderful snap here from Nicholson, who was on the right side for a left footer. It's only his third goal ever, Tim. I mean, he's only played 25 games, but he's not a goal kicker, but he was on the right side for him. So Jones out of the centre. Melbourne continuing to be so efficient. How good Mark went early, held his ground on D. So Melbourne with a real chance to strike back quickly here again. Tumpus. Wasn't far enough, so he's going to have to load it up. Nice kick off the boot, cutting across Morris with courage. But Dawes a real target yeah. forward, and hopefully a jetter or somebody can be at his feet all day. And That's right. As Davey was about three or four minutes ago. So. And they're just going to have to mix it up a little bit, because otherwise Richmond's defence will start to fall off their direct opponents and go to Dawes every time, knowing the ball. That is where the ball will be directed. So Magna loses it. Hooley collects to Edwards and to Grigg, then back to Hooley. So they went inside 50 and didn't goal, but it's been remarkable. Ten times inside 50 for five goals straight, the Demons. I mean, I think the best in the competition is about 30%, so um, they are amazing. That's an amazing stat in the early part of the game. Good tackle on Martin there. So Melbourne doing really well at the moment. And Oh, good mark to Davey. Now, he's in a position to goal here. Hopefully he'll go back and take the responsibility. He's had such a disappointing couple of years. I mean, he, he changed the face of footy in some ways, this guy, didn't he? He has that small forward, defensive type forward, creative player. He's been a good goal kicker. He averages one goal a match, and he's kicked his second today. And Melbourne continuing with this remarkable run. They've kicked six goals without a miss. And again, they won the contest. It was a... 50-50 type ball, they got there with their numbers and their strength and that's an area that they haven't been very good at this year but uh, they're able to win that ball and when I mean, we saw Mac, a couple of weeks ago against Carlton, we saw them in patches yep, they really match the Blues but much they weren't better, able yeah. to sustain it but for so much of this game they've actually been able to sustain it for sure Well, Melbourne doesn't have a lot of experienced players in their team, but it's blokes like Aaron Davey that really need to stand up. He's been good today. He's had the six possessions. He's kicked the two goals. You need your experienced players to go back and slot those goals, give a bit of confidence to the kids so that they get, get going a little bit, get a bit of run in their legs, and they can actually get a sniff of victory. So the Ds now lead it by a point, Tim. We saw Essendon and, and Brisbane yesterday, 18 lead changes, seven already here. There's been some, and there's been some really tight games this weekend too, hasn't there? All started on Friday night with that beauty. So hard to win the ball here. Floston doing his best for the Tigers. And Nick Floston's kick straight up. Will end up winning the football. So he's modelled his game on Luke Ball and Brad Sewell. And two pretty good role models, you suggest. Ellis, he's just got tired getting the football this afternoon. He tweeted last night, best quarter of football he'd seen for a long time between the two big sides in the Pies and the Cats. He's been inspired and he's having the best half he's seen on an AFL ground. 20 disposals, one goal straight Thank you. for Brandon Ellis. Back inside it goes. Jamar knocks it down. Evans somehow, Cochin just 
funneled it out. Revolt, quick hands. Nahas, Grig, Delidio. Delidio around the corner and around the corner for a behind. Just trying to pick up where Delidio What? He must have gone forward there because McKenzie didn't play him at the stop play. Uh, that's just his seventh disposal for Delidio. So McKenzie's actually done a pretty good job on actually stopping a lot of his runs so far. G. Ellis has been remarkable. His career high is 25. That was this year in Perth against the Dockers. He's up to 21 so far. And he's kicked the ball superbly today. McGuan in the contest. And then Seller wrapped up, wrapped up. Can't get it out. It finally comes out. Revolt, brilliant. And hitting the post. I thought his handball a moment ago, Revolt, was just sublime. It was just that little give which opened everything up. And so Richmond go back in front. So add another to that total. I think we're up to eight. And I'm sure, Hammer, you're going to keep count of that because it's been that sort of a match so far. It's been that sort of a weekend, hasn't it? Revolt kicked a wonderful goal in the Tony Hall pocket last week on the left. Just bending it back around this time. Not quite far enough. Matt Jones short to Nathan Jones. And then just happy just to take some time. Seller is found. And that laconic sort of a gate. And then the ball to Frawley, who's got some space at half back, and he brings it. And he finds his man in Nicholson, who kicked that long goal for the D's before the Davy goal. And over the top, how? Well, Grants did a good job in the end. Davy, he read it well, crumbed it, and the perfect ball to Dawes. Who have they got inside 50? Just the Lone Ranger, and it's Jamar. Tap Scott. He just sees it over his head. j -Mars, he's chosen. He got, got the hands on it. And Batchelor in the end did a good job crumbing. And then he gave it up with the handball. Jones, tap Scott. They'll get away with it. And Magna, oh, just offline. Disappointing in the end. But we're back to square. 37 apiece. Oh, Davies had some important touches too. Sorry, Lingy. No, sorry uh, to butt in there, Tim. I'd love to see Chris Dawes when he's up the field take a mark like that. Just wheel and go. Just turn straight away. Banging inside 50. Yep. It just beats the Richmond defenders back who were able to get back and help out on Jamar. They were really good then, though, the Demons, weren't they? They were patient down back. They set themselves up, and then, you know, they were able to move the ball with a scoring opportunity. Yep, and Davies' kick was uh, brilliant, wasn't it? Just in, in front of... Here he is again. ...centre wing and getting it from doors. Now, can he kick a third goal? He does the right thing. Oh, Jezza. Well done, Morris coming in. Maybe the kick... A slightly slow bachelor and they've really dodged one here Koch and running hard Floston, is that 50? it has to be 50 it's almost the old uh, fashioned professional 50 metre penalty wasn't this will put him right on the on the paint though so it's, it, it's probably not it's probably not a bad one to give away because they were on on the outside there Tigers, they had a lot of players that there were going to be part of an overlap See, what a disappointing result at the other end. I mean, D Davey was so unselfish, he really could have run in and kicked the goal. Yeah. And uh, he tried to square it to Jed, and the Jim Morris was so good. So Floston, 50 metres out. Good looking kick. He's a good kid, isn't he? And Richmond take the lead again. Hey, Lingy, I've just had a good look at him, and I know why you like him so much. He's a <laughs> ranger just like you, mate. <laughs> hey? Absolutely, Bruce. You know we've got to stick together. <laughs> well, the, well, why not? He's a good one to stick with, I reckon, Cam, don't you? Yeah, no, I, again, I said uh, at the start of the game I was going to keep an eye on him. I've been watching him closely. He runs to some good spots, goes and wins his own ball, and was able to finish really well with the goal there. Well, here's the kick from Davey. Oh, I'm not sure if he kicked it to Howe or he kicked it to Jeddah. In the end, it was it was Howe. Was that Howe there? Yeah. Yeah, Howe actually almost looked like he was going for the ball, then pulled out, and I think that uh, caused uh, Jeddah to miss it. He's in the action again, Davey, this time to Evans, and on the left, a long ball over the top of Door, and in the end, we'll make it Jamer, just the one behind. So the... They're doing enough damage. A couple of blemishes from six straight to six two. Tigers by five as Edwards sends the ball wide and he's got to run. And on the end of it, Rance doesn't have to break stride, but the pressure from Dawes was good. Push in the end. 
Well, it's a really interesting one for me. Is Dustin Martin, he's only had the six possessions. He's actually been playing across half back and unable to release himself. And he's had a bit of a job on Davey at times. And obviously Davey is influencing yeah, the game. Dustin Martin pushing hard now to get this one. He's got to try and get himself into the game some more. Okay, so Martin, who Lingy was talking about, finds Hooley. Might get it back again, Martin, here from Hooley. Now over the top to the running Morris. It's a, a well-weighted ball in the end over the top of Evans's head. Martin calling for it on the defensive side of the wing. Morris looks further afield, and this time it's Floston. Davey not quite able to spoil, and Floston right in front of Lingy. He's kicked a goal today, Floston, the second of his career. Now over the top to Hooley, who's done a lot of running. Revolt sets himself for the lead. In the end, it's to Oren Stevenson, who couldn't quite take it. Might be able to pick it up and give. Jones, he just stood over the top and made it really difficult for Oren. And he gets held up on the edge of the square. Mackenzie and Deledio into it as well behind play. And it's going to be a free and kick, Tim. Uh, Deledio's drawn the free kick. That's like the schoolyard when the teacher always gets a retaliator, isn't it? Well, Davey came in and gave him an extra one there. And I think the umpire was a wise to it. Chaplin gets it from Deledio. And then Chaplin with that careful kick to Jackson. Like him on the run, Jackson. We've talked about that length but inaccuracy earlier. And then Jackson... Neat and Revolt. Tight pocket and talks about his stats against Melbourne. The fact this is the one club that he doesn't bat at better than 50% from the set shots. One three and one five last year and today. Let's see at one two, I think. He is. But he's such a skillful player. He's on track actually for a very big number this year. We'll talk about that later in the match. And that's a beautiful, beautiful kick. He's got his second. He's a mighty fine player, isn't he? I mean, he's a different big spear. He's not really the big giant spearhead. He's, he's certainly not. He's probably Dunstall's height. I guess. He's not the weight of Dunstall mm. or, or Lockett, obviously. But he, he's not a giant, but uh, he can play very tall. And uh, look, he's got remarkable skills. Great mark. I think good team sense. Beautiful kick. And he's becoming a handful, Tim. He is, again, not enough pressure on the ball outside 50. See Davey there. Nathan Jones, he's up to 5.6 kilometres playing in the midfield. But Davey's really wound the clock back today, hasn't good. he? Been very good. So the Tigers by 11 back-to-back -back goals. Floston and Revolt after... It was all level, and then Deledio just quickly punches it forward out of the air. Strauss has got to be good here. He's got King with pressure, and Ellis, who's got the opposite number five doing the pressuring work. Ellis just kicks it out of bounds without being out of bounds on the full. So he must have been over. we got Jimmy Tumpus with a problem on screen. So it doesn't look so good. The trainer's calling immediately. Hold, Mark Jamer. Can't put your arms around him, Warren for nope. help from the bench Stop and that doesn't look good you. Tim Melbourne can't really take a trick no. at the moment Jimmy Tumpus a uh, very exciting young player Gee, I hope he hasn't hurt himself too badly there for himself but also just for the Melbourne people writhing in pain on the ground went number four in the draft and he and Viney are two of the youngsters who is the incident I just wonder whether he trod on the foot he, he did the left ankle just rolled that yep. first uh, Ellis's foot and then just rolling over so um Still in the hands of trains, they're going to take him off the ground. And Martin to Foley now to Deledio. He looks further afield. King's the target again. Garland has that height advantage, and he does it pretty well, Garland, in the end. And out of trouble for the moment for the Demons, but they've had trouble keeping out of trouble. Matt Jones wrapped up, big tackle, going nowhere. Here's Tumpus limping towards Lingy. Would they be better? Like leaving him on the ground oh, just calling for the stretcher in a situation like that. I mean, they're now going to be down to 17 players. He's taking a long time to get off the ground. Mm. Sure is, Tim. The ball was pretty close to him a moment ago, wasn't it, in play yeah. as he was coming off? And, and I'm not sure a poor bloke who's got a sore ankle like that needs to be running the entire width of the MCG oh, to get off. That that can't be doing it much good. He might be running it out right now. Yeah, it's pretty it's, tough. Could be doing uh, it a bit of good, actually. He's <laughs> taking his way well. Edwards goes forward, Vickery and Seller. And 
Garland and King. Well done, King. And then brilliantly creating. Back to Vickery. Bouncing ball could be dangerous. Fraudy belts it through. Lingy, I'm not sure I want you to be my GP. I reckon I'd walk in and you'd say one thing and then you'd have me doing something else in five minutes. Well, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust me too much, Bruce. Uh, leave that one up to the experts, I think. So, Trengove. Floston. Jones. Back to Trengove. Inside he goes. Jones again now to Davey. And then the short ball is on and he's found his man. He's away quickly and over the top. Doors again the target. Avoids the pigeons and rants though. Just forces the error. Jackson picks it up. And the pressure was good from Doors. The second and third effort. What we saw Davey do then is what he was so good at. And they used to try and go backwards, upside down, trying to get the ball to him. Because he was such a good disposer of the ball. And again, you know, just trying to set the play up for Melbourne in the back half. Ling is Jimmy Tub has gone straight down the race. Straight straight down in the rooms to be uh, to be checked out. Uh, talking at the moment his left ankle, but the outside the, the lateral ligaments of the left ankle are the ones that are uh, the big worry at the moment. He looked to be sort of half sound by the time he got to the boundary, but straight down he goes. So we'll keep an eye on that. The docks here today. We might be able to get him on the job. Jones's kick. Gone almost, not quite, hasn't done much so far today. And then Evans trying to turn, and then Davey and Floston. Tim's talked a lot about Davey, and he's been really very, very good. Jeddah on the up. Well done, Nahas, to just prevent Jones, and then Chaplin to Hurley, a couple of left hand. Gee, that was cheeky by Hurley, but he drew the man and got to uh, Stevenson, who showed some deft touch, and that's a beautiful kick. Well played to Edwards, and then Edwards with the poor kick in the end. He had really cool. one or two opportunities, but he's turned it over to Jones. Now, can Melbourne hurt them? Well, Jeddah again has to wait. And then Jamar, Rance, Magna, head down. Important ball, this one. Jeddah, not a great handball. Evans got down low. That didn't go 15. Jones, Davey. Well, he's had a good day, and he should. And misses. There's a yeah. free kick coming back. Downfield. It'll be paid. Yep. So Davies hit the post. He'll have another crack at it. I don't know why he tried to roll the ball through then. So I know we see so many of the modern day players do that, but it just took the wrong bounce for him then. Yeah. So I think the push was against uh, Richmond on e Evans, I think, who was doing the shepherding. So Davies been in this pocket a couple of times today. Not much good has happened. So one was to jet of the pass and the other one was just then but he's kicked the third goal and he's having a really big impact in this match I mean Tim you've talked about it and Lingy I might bring you in here I mean he's the guy right now that you want to have the ball at hand if you're Melbourne isn't he well he certainly is he, uh, you mentioned that he's almost winding the clock back he's got plenty of run he's using the ball really well he's just so dangerous uh, he's, he's a quality player when he's up and going. It's great that he's leading the way for the young Melbourne team at the moment. Well, here's a free kick. Edwards there just going into the back of Evans and uh, Davey missing, but getting a second opportunity at it. So we're back to within one straight kick after... The D's led by quarter time by a couple of points. Grigg just pokes it forward. The next effort, well, the umpire will say slip. So natural, isn't it, Tim, for the yeah. footballers? They haven't quite come to terms with the sliding rule yet. You're seeing less of it, though. You're seeing players actually thinking their way through it better than what they did in the early part of the season. So Garland has oh. one on. He waited for it in Evans, and he's going to get lucky, Evans, and then gets Delito high. Umpire just let it play. McGuan over the top to Nahas. And the kick to Vickery. Well, it was well weighted, and Vickery drags it in. A bit of scuffle between Evans and Delito. They've targeted Delito, Melbourne, haven't they? They've been into yeah. him all, all quarter, actually. Delito may be able to afford the fine, but I'm not sure about Evans. He probably wouldn't want to be paying too many of those. Full match payment. So, Vickery, hard up against the perimeter fence. A slow, cautious approach. Looks okay, goes across the face and just a minor score. 
put on some bulk in the last 18 months, Tim. Vickery, just a stronger looking forward. He's got all the tools, hasn't he? You, you, just, you just think that, you know, a couple of seasons ago, before last year, he actually had a really good season. Last year, he was injured and struggled. But uh, Where you are. every now and then, you just see a glimpse of what he may become on a consistent basis. Gee, Strauss wasn't expecting that from Seller. Good mark taken by Turlick. And got a bit lucky, the D's there. Seller had a bit of a missed kick and went straight to Strauss. I'll be aware of what the time is the Demon player, so I'll just play this slow to half time. And they've done a pretty good job. I mean, there's been a competitive first half. Richmond lead by seven points. But Melbourne very much in this match. Davies kicked three. First time he's done that in a match since 2008. Half time of the G, it's 51 to 44. Still a bit of feeling here. The Tigers over the D's on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, Jackson in hard. So Jackson there. And wow. Rance is a little bit of aggro here. And uh, it's starting to roll on a bit. It's getting larger. They'll be loving this. They're about to head off overseas on a junket. They'll be needing some money to spend while they're away. Hey, Ling, he's right in front of you, mate. This has just flared up from nowhere. Ling's got to get involved. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not I'm not involved here, boys. I'm just keeping an eye on this one. A little bit of feeling here. There was a bit of niggle towards the end of this half anyway, but uh, it's certainly erupted now. Jackson coming in, probably inflamed it all, but they're just sorting it out now. Bit of testosterone flying around. Got to enjoy this stuff. Lingy hasn't even got to have his seat. So half time here at the G with it bubbling over here. It's 51 to 44. The Tigers over the D's. So here's the half time flare up. There's been a bit going on. Delidio's been the guy that I think. Melbourne have targeted a bit, and this looked like it was just going to be nothing, and a couple of players, particularly I think Jackson, just went in really hard, and from there on in it got uh, a bit of a rumble, and there will be some fines for sure at half-time. So a lot of feeling here. Melbourne have kept up throughout the match. They've been in front for bits and pieces. They've been accurate. We know that. They've been efficient going into their forward 50, and right now they're in this match. And uh, it's a seven-point game. It's 51-44. to 44. Good game of footy, Tim. It has. It's been a really entertaining uh, first half of footy. The thing that did drop off in that second quarter for Melbourne, though, were the tackles. We talked about that at quarter time. 18 in the first quarter, just nine in that second quarter. So that would be something that I think that Mark Neal will be zeroing in on at half time. And Eddie had earlier today the Blues against the Power. It's Carlton got the money. Jared Waite uh, back uh, today uh, for just his second game of the season. So 108 to 85, Garlett four, Murphy three. And I said, wait back. He'd only played the one game, got suspended. We saw that match. That's the one goal he kicked. He kicked one, two. But he was subbed off because he injured his finger in the third quarter. And that's the marking contest where he injured his finger. So sometimes, I mean, it can only just be a little finger, but it, it can be a bad, uh, it could be a fracture or it could be a dislocation or whatever. So as you mentioned, he has been an injury prone player. And the other thing, he not only got suspended, he got fined by the club yeah, as well did, for yeah. that suspension. Now, Murphy's 150th kicked three today, got 11. Scotland's 250th. So both the milestone players were playing well. And they they really would have had to step up today because a number of their players out of, we know that uh, Yaron was out and Betts was out as well, mm -hmm. so they would have expected a lot from Scotland today and uh, on most occasions he delivers, he's been a really consistent performer. And Gala got four to go to 21 for the season, so that's a very good performance by him so far. So here he is, uh, Judd getting involved. So Garlick's really been, I guess, Betts has been in and out all year, Yaron's gone mm -hmm. forward, but he's been their uh, main goal scorer. The Coleman medalist leading on 26, so he's not far away. He's, a, uh, he's such a talented player, isn't he? And not only does he kick goals, he puts enormous pressure on defenders too. So Port lose their last couple, uh, last uh, three now, and Carlton win three of their last four, and they've got Brisbane next week, so you know they're, they're about the place, aren't they? That's right, and Brisbane's form yesterday, that's not going to be an easy trip on the road. Plenty more still to come at halftime. Hamish after this for Melbourne Trail, but they're very much in this match against the Tigers. It's a seven-point game here at halftime. Welcome back to Sunday Football. Tigers by seven points at halftime. Time now to hear an emotional story about a man in Mackendo who is an enormous part of the Richmond Football Club, a part of its family, and he's had a very hard time of late. It's almost that his, his body's shutting down and not letting him do um, the things that he has always wanted to and, and loved doing. It's called MSA. It's very rare. There's only 2,000 people in Australia that have it. 
but it looks like Parkinson's when it's uncontrolled. So Parkinson's disease is the most common movement disorder that people see. It's, it's hard to see. It's, it's someone you care about and um, to see how, how tough it's been for him. And obviously he's a very proud person and uh, to have a debilitating illness like that um, is always going to be hard. My friend uh, Chris Bradshaw, who's his doctor at Geelong, he used to be the club doctor here. And uh, he always wanted to get me down here. Yeah, I think I've attended possibly 300 games. It can be really tough being in rehab at times, so he was always really good to be around, he was good fun and um, always went above and beyond in terms of the rehab process and looking for ways to uh, to get me back on the track. I've always been a big believer that good people breeds a good culture and I think he's certainly one of those guys that's sort of helped create the culture that we have now. The club's been very supportive and from day one they all said, well how can we help you? Um, we also had our dinner the other night that we raised, uh, I think it was about $50,000. So it was great for him just to see so many people there. I think it's the um, the most people we've ever, ever had upstairs. Got the donation from the club. He's also become a, a life member, which is a huge one for, for us. And yeah, we're just gonna just give, give him a, he a heads up and, and a helping hand wherever we can. You know, as I say, it's, it's, the football club's a great place. Places how they look after their own and all that, but it, yeah, they've been fantastic for me and my family. Big businesses, football clubs these days, Tim, but uh, for so many, football clubs are simply an extension of their family, and Ian McIndoe and the family we're thinking of, Ian, every club has a story like that, doesn't it? They do, Ham. It doesn't matter what level the football club's at, too. I mean, they're like a family, as you say. They wrap their arms around those people that are in need, and uh, I mean, that was a really emotional story. Yeah. Brandon Ellis, uh, he's been really good for the Tigers today. He's had 21 to half time. His PB, Tim, is 25 in a match. He's been uh, on fire. Not any of those have been uncontested, so he's been that player on the outside, that outlet player that they've gone to more often than not. He's kicked the goal as well, so he's been an outstanding performer in the first half, and you would think that at halftime, Mark Neal's putting a little bit of time into just trying to shut him down ever so slightly. Chris Dawes, a target, just his second game for the Demons, two goals, but in the absence of Mitch Clark, a sorely need, needed target, and together they could be formidable. Yeah, and you just wonder what they're going to be like when they do finally get to play together, these two, because you would think that they are going to be a handful for key defenders in the competition. He's only had five disposals, but he's moved around, he's really worked extremely hard, and not only offensively, he actually works very hard defensively as well. He chases really hard out of the forward line, so um, you know, he's been really bright in the first half. It's been pretty tight, nine lead changes so far this afternoon. Demons by two points a quarter time at half time. It's a tight It's Richmond by seven points here at the MCG, but let's look forward a little bit further on in time to next Saturday night at the MCG. It's dream time at the G between Richmond and Essendon, and here is the Richmond jumper that they're going to be wearing. It's been designed by Nathan Patterson, an artist from Torquay, my hometown. Very good to see. Well done, Nathan. But this is the jumper that the Richmond players are, are going to wear. It's available for sale in the Tigers store. All proceeds go to Richmond's Indigenous program. It's a fantastic design. It's going to be a huge night of footy here at the MCG next Saturday night. That's for sure. Looking, looking forward to that. Now looking forward to seeing some of these numbers with Cameron and also Tim. These are the GPS data on the Tigers in that first half. So we've picked out Grig, Hooley and Jackson. I guess there's no surprise there that uh, Grig, who's an outside type uh, runner and a link player, would be one of those players that's covered a fair bit of distance. Basha Hooli across half back also likes to get on his bike and run and create as much as he possibly can. Signs have even taken to you know, tagging him because of how an attacking and offensive weapon he can become at that part of the ground. Just on numbers, uh, Lingy, as we have a look at the Melbourne group with the GPS and we've got Jones, Howe, Dawes and Mackenzie. Cam, you can see those, I think. So Howe's at 7.3, which is a uh, big number, isn't it? Yeah, really, really surprising there. It shows how big a work rate he's got. It, it's looking about 14 Ks for the game, which is big numbers. Chris Dawes, it shows his work rate as a key forward. Not surprised Jordy McKenzie's got big numbers. He's uh, got the run with Roland Brett Deledio. He was always going to cover a few Ks. And Melbourne have been forced to activate their sub. Bruce, it's Jimmy Tumpus who is out. We saw him go off with that ankle injury. And Rowan Bale is the man who's in. So Bale on. So Tumpus, that injury must be a little more severe than we first... Well, we thought when he came from the ground because he's got a bit of a gallop up. So no Tumpus for the second half. 
Second half about to start here at the MCG. Richmond by seven points over Melbourne. Been a lot of lead changes. And Ellis, the outstanding player in the first half with 21 disposals off half back. And there he is already in the fray. And just on numbers, I mean, Jack Tringo, five today so far, Tim. Not sure exactly the role he's playing in. But again, those numbers are not all that good for the captain. Here's Cochin. I'll get back to that. Cochin, it's a beautiful kick to Vickery. I mean, on the outside of the foot. That was just sublime, wasn't it? We were right behind that kick. It was just the most beautifully weighted kick. That's it. So Vickery's kicked three behind so far today. This is magnificent stuff. No pressure at all on that kick, though, too, out of that stoppage. So, you know, as a defender, you just need and hope that somebody upfield is going to be putting some pressure on those disposals. So well within range. He struck it really well, but he's hooked it again. So four behind. Just back to Tringo for a moment. I mean, just the five disposals. What have you seen so far from him? Well, I, I sort of was watching him early in the game, wondering whether or not he was playing a forward defensive sort of a role. Um, he's pushed up the ground now. We might just get Lingy to keep an eye on him for the next five minutes just to see exactly what he's doing work rate-wise and what type of a role he's trying to play. I'll do that, Tim, for sure. He has gone into the middle of the ground, so they, at least they've thrown him in amongst the action, just said, mate, go out there and win some footy, but I'll, I'll keep an eye on him for you. Defensively, he's on Grigg now. So j -Mar just pads it down. Tigers will get there first. It's Deledia who just darts inside again, and then a long bomb from a long way out. It's just offline. He's, oh, yeah. he's speedy, Deledia. He turned quickly, so... Actually, I was thinking about how before when uh, we put up those GPS numbers, and I think he'd run, what, 7 point. Three or four? Seven, yeah. three Ks. He's only had three touches. You think he's traveled a long distance for those. A lot of work for effort, isn't it? It's Revolt just putting in front of Vickery. Somehow manages to get the ball to Jackson. He bustles through and dishes it back to Vickery this time. And he goes further back to Morris, who goes short. And that was clever. Didn't blast away. He saw Greg. And that is who Trengove is picking up at the moment. And that's what I like about Morris is he's a really clever user of the ball. He always lowers his eyes. He checks, you know, the longer option, but, uh, yep. you know, just poise and composure there. Somebody in a better position on their own. 15 gone, Sean. Spoke about Grig early. Just played the 43 games over four years as a blue, and he's missed just the one with that eye injury. And he strikes it pretty ordinarily in the end. It just sort of floats through, no pressure on the goal line. So the margin gets extended, but not as much as Damien Hardwick would have liked to be extended by. Morris has come off the ground too when Davey came off the ground, so he may have been given a more defensive job now on Aaron Davey, who was really impressive in the first half. So Frawley out wide, good mark. Gloucester G's been impressive. And then controls it to the pocket to King. So they had 10 more scoring shots, the Tigers. That's what Fremantle had last night, 10 more scoring shots than Sydney in the draw. So they're 10 points in front, and you wonder if all these misses are going to come back to bite them today. You don't think they will, because they're playing Melbourne, who have been notoriously a terrible team in the third quarter this year. They've had some absolute third-quarter disasters. And King, who's been very constructive today, giving away a couple and kicking one, and again, a set shot missing. So they've been peppering, so to speak, but not delivering here. Tim, you talk about moments in season. We spoke about how of the top six sides coming into the weekend, only the Hawks have won. Frio and Sydney have had a draw. This is just a must win for the Tigers, isn't it? To sort of make all that, uh, or make those results count for the Tigers. Quickly they go. Howe sets himself. Was he tunnelled or pushed? Or? He looked like he might have been tunnelled, there. Yeah. Richmond are now 4-7 from set shots. That Melbourne are five straight. So, I mean, oh, look at that. Well, How goes straight to Bachelor. Delito missed his target. They might get lucky here, the Tigers. Mackenzie to Jones, who waits it over the top. And well, Magna keeps it in. No, he gets caught in the end. Gee, had very little to go to then, Jones, when he broke two. So the last five scores of the match to the Tigers, but they haven't really hurt the Ds yet. They lead it by just 11. Jackson goes long to the square. It's, well, it was a goal or it was a Martin ball. It'll be a goal either way. So Dustin Hulingi said has been quietish this afternoon. We'll go back and score for the first time. And 
got busy, Amy's just before half time. Actually, just after Ling mentioned it, but he started to get a bit of the ball, didn't he? Yeah, he went from five to ten in quick time. So, Cole. this to the famous punt road end of the MCG, and the margin becomes 17. So, the big margin of the net. You talked about Jackson earlier, Hamish, and about the fact that there's a you know, the big query on his kicking. I mean, on the run like that, he's actually got a very good kick. I mean, that was a superb kick. It was either going to be a goal or a mark to Martin. But from the set shots, he can uh, he can spray them a lot. Yeah. So Martin going forward here. This is why he's such a good player. And I mean, he can play as a... This bloke can play as a permanent forward. It just gives him that versatility. Can mark over his head, play as a tool. Just watch how they waltz out of this stoppage. There's Jackson taking a really good position. A tap down to him inside and then it's just a long deep kick he's having a shot at goal there but uh, Martin doing the right thing unsure exactly where he is and Martin won out to him with Garland in the goal square so playing him as that uh, medium forward Jones to half forward tap Scott D on the up well done Foley just got away from Bachelor. Jones gets it forward to Dawes takes one two that's yeah, holding the ball not a great effort from Dawes there. I no. mean, there was some effort, but it wasn't clever. He pushed hard to the ball, but uh, there's some good defensive pressure from Richmond that's been applied. And you just wonder whether they got a bit of an old-fashioned rev at half-time from Damien Hardwick. So Rance. Wide, wide, wide. Very poor kick. Tringo to Jones. And then Matt Jones hooks to full four. Bale, who's come on. Out of position. And a free kick all mark. Take your pick. So that was a poor Thank effort you. by Melbourne, yep. really. They had some chances, and that's an awful kick. And Dunn, who slotted one from, I reckon, this distance and maybe a better angle, slightly better angle, in the first quarter can make them pay. Right, right, Hold that line, Lyndon. He's good Marks kick. Here. We know that. This is a battle of, nice right, okay. and a test, I reckon, of his temperament as much as his skill here, because this keeps Melbourne very much in the match. We've had some... As we said, really bad third quarters this year. West Coast completely blew them away and kicked 11. Gold Coast last week. Been a couple of others. They've got to hold firm here. And Dunn can help here by slotting the goal. And he has. So he's kicked two goals from full back. That's a good return. So they stay in, Tim, don't they? I mean... I mean, the weight of numbers eventually yeah. you think will swamp them, but right now they're they're hanging around. Well, inside 50s are 17 to Melbourne now and 30 to Richmond, so weight of numbers have uh, would suggest that they should be behind. But we, as I said, we saw this yesterday. Uh, the uh, Brisbane Lions uh, were well down on inside 50s against Essendon, uh, something like 21, and they were down on disposals, all the other indicators too, and clearances. That's a uh, that's an horrendous turnover there. You see that more and more, don't you, where players, they leave that space knowing that they can actually close that space down if the kick actually goes there, and they're tempting the opposition to place the ball there. So the D's inside 50, 17 times for the afternoon. Eight goals, remarkable efficiency. in Vlosten, the youngster, gets caught or gets pushed? The latter. They've won their last two uh, centre bounce clearances too, Melbourne, so that's a positive sign. So a beautiful ball wide to Vickery. Had to wait, but... He can go as soon as he gets it and takes a bounce. The big man's got a turn of foot here and he puts it in the direction of Nahas. Just a little bit too hot in the end, so Turlick happy just to see it over. Gee, he's got a turn of speed, hasn't he, Vickery? Surprised me. Yeah, that was a very athletic time. A bit of KB in him at 29. This time he just sort of flicks it over the back, so... He's been all around the ground this afternoon, Ty Vickery. And if you're a Tyke supporter, you came here thinking, well, this should be a pretty enjoyable afternoon. You wouldn't have thought it was going to be nine lead changes inside a couple of kicks of eight or nine minutes into the third term. But the Ds have continued to hang around this afternoon. And it's just a nervous time for the Tigers. The expectation is they kick away and win and make the form of the top six sides this weekend really help them. Right now, it's still in dispute, and Dawes has been a big part of keeping the Demons in it this afternoon. Came off Richmond hands first, Chris. Lingy, we asked you to keep an eye on Jack Trengove. Have you worked out exactly what his role is now? 
Well, I think the role at the moment, Tim, is to play as a forward and trying to draw uh, one of the Richmond defenders to him. So almost not, not a full decoy, but so that he can at least engage his opponent and try and get Chris Dawes in a one-on-one -on -one contest. He's playing a very sacrificial role, very wide at the moment, uh, but his work rate is big. Uh, I don't think you could ever question his, his work rate. I just don't know if he's getting value for that work rate at the moment. So Nicholson got it from McKenzie to half four doors, gives away a free Boys, kick. Richmond. He's been sloppy doors in this quarter. I mean, he's a bit stiff before because that ball did come off the Richmond hands and he claimed them up. But he's uh, been giving away a free kick or two in this turn when they've been in the forward 50 or close to it. And that is costly. Lost him back to Ellis, who's closing in on that, on that PB that we've talked about, his career high. Martin in the back half now. He kicked the goal earlier in this quarter, playing basically as the full forward and taking them on Martin and again a very bad turnover so Melbourne with a real opening here and then Jones kicks the centre half forward and just all a bit too slow Rant's over to cut it off Revolt handball back to Ellis and then Ellis gets it off to Greg but again so Ellis what's he up to Hamish? 25 equal with his PB and Martin just goes through the middle to Vickery it's a brilliant kick and now Vickery's off he just draws the forwards, and it's a good kick at the end of Nahas. You'd think just too far out. Revolt short, screaming for it, and then over the top, Morris, who finds some space at half forward. And he was rewarded for his hard running there. He started at half back, and Vickery probably could have come inside to him the first time round, but he kept running into that space. And that's what you want players to do. Once you've got control of the ball, if they think that they can get on the end of it, you can see him just in the bottom of the screen now. He continues running into the space that's been created in the pocket. And then finally, he receives the ball. So Stephen Morris with that famous pedigree. Son of a Tiger, best and fairest winner. He's just kicked the one goal since being a Tiger. This is his 28th match. He's been a terrific Tiger. And now he's, he's got a couple in the yellow and black. His first for the year. Well, his pedigree stretches beyond the old man. His mum was an Australian basketballer as well, so he's, uh, as you would like to say, Hamish, he's well-bred. <laughs> i tell you what he is, he's tough. And whether you're a Richmond supporter or a Melbourne supporter or any of the other clubs, he's the sort of guy you want playing for you. Well, his old man came, he was an assistant coach at Essen for a number of years as well, so I got to know him. He was a, a fanatical competitor. His mum was a fanatical competitor too, so he's got both those genes. So the injured players in the stands there for the Tykes. Marich on the right. And I want him back as quick as possible. Sadly, two of the best mullets in the game watching on this <laughs> afternoon. Yeah, they are something, aren't they? So Morris, who only other goal to been against Hawthorne in round nine last year, gives Richmond that breathing space again. It's a 17-point game. Can they put a bit more in that? Delidio to fall forward. Cotchen needs the bounce. Didn't quite get it. She's a good player, Cotchen, though. It took them forever to get him down. He almost kept his feet against gravity there. Love watching him play. It's a three-goal game, and the Tigers have got a real sniff here. Davey outnumbered. Little kick forward by Ellis. And the mark taken in the back half there by Strauss. Important here that Melbourne stay competitive. I mean, they've been good for two and a bit quarters. We talked about that Carlton game a couple of weeks ago when they weren't too bad, but they've got to hang in. Here's how We've talked about his GPS. He's hurt himself. Two metres! Well, Bruce, this isn't going to help Melbourne with their staying competitive. Uh, Chris Dawes is headed down the race to uh, to get checked out. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but he's been down there quite a while. So I'll keep you updated, but they need him on the ground if they're going to be competitive and try and pinch this one today. So Tupas already has disappeared and now Dawes in a bit of trouble. Actually, that's going to take a little bit of work in terms of uh, restructuring their forward line if yeah. they were to lose Dawes at this, early, at this stage of the game. They've got Gorn now who's playing deep and obviously he's sharing the ruck work with Jamar. Well, Jamar's tap worked out pretty well in the end. Jones to McKenzie, now to Magnum, back to Trengove who fumbled. Martin might have just got a bit agricultural, got away with it though. The D's, they keep possession and Jed as the target takes the sliding mark. That's a smart kick. Here we go, into space. So Gorn's the tall man down there at the moment. Bale too, Gorn goes back, Chaplin, hands on it, couldn't complete it. Floston, I think, underneath it all. The tough man, the youngster. Good attack on the football again, as he's done every time he's represented the club. Mark Williams watches on, and McGuan puts on 
the red vest lingy down yes, there. Yes, home. Uh, Richmond have activated their sub. As you mentioned, McGuan is the man subbed off the ground. And, uh, of course, it is Matty White who will be subbed on as uh, Melbourne get a shot at goal here. Yeah, put down the ground, uh, contact off the ball, Lingy, so real chance here for the Ds. Quiet day for McGuan too, just uh, two possessions. He was the forward target on six occasions and he wasn't able to have any impact on this game. So Seller had the job on him, I think, didn't yeah, he? he did a good job defensively, yep. yeah. He's had a good year, McGuan, a good couple of years as our forward, so McGuan's had a quiet day, he had one shot from the pocket earlier, but he's kicked six goals in his four matches coming in and he does need to slot it, and that's, uh, well, you saw it. Chris Dawes back up from the from the race, boys. Looking okay, looking like he's keen to get back out on the ground. So that's a big miss, isn't it? I mean, they got a, a sort of a gift shot at goal. When I say gift, I mean, they probably heard it, but it was down the ground, and then Gorn just made a mess of it. Ellis, been fantastic today. Out the back. So Tringo going to get the free here. Davies has gone a little bit cold in this third quarter too, yet to have a disposal, just the one tackle. So Davy has three goals for the afternoon. Dawes at halftime had a couple. He's disappeared. We're not sure for how long. So Gorn becomes the target. Rant, so this time just stops the Ds for the moment. If they could turn within a couple of goals, I think the Ds would be delighted with the afternoon, but still a long way off three-quarter time. Rance hugs the boundary line and in the end Oren Stevenson not able to clunk the football. Disposals 237 to 160 so it's been dominant from gathering of the football. Good signs there. Chris Dawes on his feet. Lingy not so far from you. No and very keen to get back out there too home. He's, uh, he's chomping on the bit. Jackson Sweeping handball, goes to a bit of space, and then the knock-on from Grigg. There's a couple of Tigers there. Delidio just tries to flick it in the white direction, who's freshly on the ground. Nahas gets caught with the football incorrect disposal. So Terlik has had the job on Nahas. Melbourne defenders, as we said, for most of the match have been pretty good in the one-on-ones. Garland, smooth mover Garland. Could have handballed, decided to just go over the top, so it gives Nicholson a bit of breathing space. And Nicholson has kicked a nice goal today. That's a good kick inside. Evans back to Magna. Now Magna to the pocket. Davey, we've been talking about him. It was a lovely kick from Magna. And Davey's in not a bad spot for the left footer. I reckon that's the best ball movement we've seen all day from Melbourne too. They hit their targets. They came inside. They went back outside again. And Davey getting his first touch since Morris went on to him. We said earlier it's been a long time since he's kicked three goals in a match. Make that... No, not four. I thought it was a real chance in the run. So, first time he started in a match, Davey, for a long time. You've got to go way back to the third round this year. So, I think he's justified that inclusion starting on the ground. He's had a very good day so far. So, 23 scoring shots to just 11, and the margin still under that three goals. Can they get the next, the Ds? Davey to Frawley now to dangerous spot for the Tigers. The big fly out the back almost. It's picked up by Bale. He should finish and he does. You know, Tim, you can, you, so we get to a stage in the match where you think a team's not going to go away. I'm not sure if Melbourne are quite there, but so you this, would have felt that with Brisbane yesterday. I mean, probably very early, but you do get a, a time in a match where you say, no, nah, they're not going to go away today. Now, I reckon they're five minutes away from not going away. They need to just be there in another five minutes, I reckon. I reckon they've picked their um, aggression up again in the last five minutes of play. I think when they came out after halftime, it looked like Richmond was going to play all over them. But how often do we see this? Just uh, hitting that part of the ground, getting a contest and a crumb and a goal. I yeah. mean, that is sort of the old-fashioned yeah. way of scoring, Absolutely. isn't it? And they've had the last four inside 50s. Lingy, so they stay close. We're just saying we feel they're five minutes away from really having a chance here. Yeah, absolutely, Bruce. It's amazing what happens when a group of players get a sniff of victory, get a bit of confidence. They're all of a sudden running running really well, using the ball well. You never know in AFL footy. That's why it's so great. So Dawes at target. Jones over the top. Big play coming up. Can Tringo do and go for goal? Davey and D. The ball coming down. McKenzie, was he taken home? And well done by the Tigers in the end. But suddenly, I reckon we've come we've come to the moment in the match. This next four or five minutes, where things will be decided. 
in terms of a close match or a, a big Richmond victory. So within striking distance, the D's. Oren Stevenson knocks it. Dawes does the same. White gets collected as he got hold of the football. And they really scrap and scavenge for the ball. Hammer, I talked about this at halftime, how their tackles have dropped off in the second quarter. They're back up again in this third quarter, Melbourne. They're up to 13 now to four. So that would have been an emphasis at halftime. So they've responded. And Nathan Jones, 8.1 on the GPS so far. Here they go, the Ds. Jamar, it's just going to be offline. Terribly so in the end. No score and no opportunity for the forwards. So they need to make the most of this last six minutes. Back to within 11. They, they got out to 18 points, the Tigers, Lingy. And they need to trap the ball in here. If they can just get some repeat entries, they can kick another goal here and really put the heat on. Great work there. And that's exactly what you were talking about, Cam, wasn't it? So, Jamar. So, Jamar and Gorn have had a couple of bad shots at goal, but he's wound up frawly here with a long ball. That's poor. And Delete here yeah, getting back. They still made him move, though, didn't they? Tap Scott well, and also McKenzie. They've been into him all day, haven't they? So... And this is where Richmond have turned the ball over a bit, coming out of their defensive 50. Hurley on the end of it, got it from Grigg. And then Hurley, that's a good kick. Floston, so much to like about him. Kick to the advantage of Vickery. But Davey just has to keep up with Floston here. That's really poor play from Davey. And Floston can make him pay. Good kick. Well, Tim have summed it up. I mean, Martin, who plays tall, but... Floston had to be gone with there, and he wasn't. Well, Davey actually overplayed the first kick, and that was he should have gone to the most dangerous player, and it was Floston who was deeper. He could have let the forward Richmond player go here, and almost at half back. And he went to play the the forward player. Floston got out the back, and then Floston got out the back again after he overlapped with his run. Take a nine in the draft, Floston. Nine of the top ten draft picks from last year have been played so far this year. Just one of the GWS players hasn't had a game, but gee, he has been so impressive. Martin now on the end of a set shot right in front for the second time in the quarter and Richmond get that break again Martin's got two goals in this turn he's up to 18 Foston yeah no he's been he Tim, has been very good hasn't he and Timmy's a good decision maker I mean yeah. he's tough he's brave we know that skills are high but he makes good decisions and that uh, you know Lingy touched on earlier about him being really rounded for a kid and yeah you know, the coaches talk about how poor defensively a lot of the kids are when they step out of the under-18 competition. Mm. You know, they can all attack, they can all get on the end of it, but not a lot of them want to defend, but he does it all. Just watch Davey closely here. I mean, there's Foston getting out of the back first. There's the first kick, just jogging along behind him, and then there's the handball received from Foston. So, I mean, it's just really poor play from an experienced player. So Martin, who is quiet and Camling mentioned it, since then, he's really upped his work rate. 14 disposals now, and he's kicked two goals, both in this, the third term. And really smart by Damien Hardwick, too. He, he noticed that the play, playing him off half-back wasn't working, pushed him forward, and now, obviously, kicking goals and being extremely dangerous. You speak of Loston. I mean, it would have been easy to blaze away as he was streaming inside then and used his non-preferred and found Dustin Martin. You sense it. Floston's going to be a footballer that Tyke supporters really enjoy watching for a very long time, Tim. I watched him during the pre-season. I was really impressed with the way he went about it. And uh, he almost forced his, you know, his way into the side uh, in that first game. So the 237's doing the ruck work in the middle there. Edwards just getting a little poke forward. And it all works out pretty well for the Tykes here. King from a long way out at the punt road end. And push up. He gets it out to 23 points. They love him. Is just a fumble by Melbourne in the middle of the ground there. Not clean hands, spilled, and it was a great finish, wasn't it? He's had a good day again. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a cameo type player. He doesn't need he doesn't need big numbers. That, that's not his go. His go is you know eight, ten, twelve, combative. <laughs> but. Uh, He's like a cameo actor, this bloke. He doesn't need big numbers to have an impact, does he? He's a, he's, I think a lot of players have got a story about him. Yeah, and no, I absolutely love Jakey King. You asked for a story from me. I've got one for you. We've got him on Saturday Night Footy next week on the lie detector test. And one thing we learned from that is he's got the word Jake tattooed on the inside of his lip. He must really love his tattoos to do that. Gee, OK, that is a bit of information. Thank you for that. <laughs> So 
At eight goal kickers now, the Tigers too. So even though they've only kicked 11, they've had a good spread with their goal kickers. And Cochin, until we talked about the moment it arrived five minutes ago, well, Richmond have responded, haven't they? Yep. They've good. put that space in Melbourne. Ellis has been good, but that's not so good. Now to Dunn. Melbourne need that late goal just to close it up again and to give them some heart. Dawes has been OK. Probably played slightly better than his two goals. Tringo. Still low on numbers, getting a little bit of it in this term. And that's a lovely kick to Howell. And we just haven't seen Howell in any scoring positions today, have we? They've missed him a couple of times when they've gone yeah. forward, Melbourne. And he's, he's like he's been on a long drive, Tim, but he's missed his destination today. I mean, you know, we talked about the GPS numbers. He hasn't been able to find the bus stop. Well, he's, up, he's almost yep. you know, covered 10 kilometres in the game so far, Jeremy Howell. So this would be something if he could dob this. And he has dobbed this. That is a great goal. Well, it was, it was a hook all the way, wasn't it? But it was a very good finish. I mean, you talked about Dawes, and he hasn't had a great, great afternoon, but he always pushes up and provides a target. You know, whether or not he takes the ball or not, he's providing that target and that outlet type player. And it was a hook, but it was a dog leg left. So, so it yeah, sort of worked out OK. Uh, Blighty said something about a centre half forward. He said, I created an illusion in the grand final. We didn't have one, they thought we had one. Dawes is doing a bit of that today. <laughs> that was a real hook. And uh, well, Howe's on the board in Melbourne. Well, they, they're hanging, they're hanging around. So if they get one more, Tim, are they close enough at three quarter time from what you've seen, or have they been flattered by the numbers? No, they're close enough. And once players start to believe, as Lingy talked about before, I mean, you're in with a chance when players start to think that they can win a game. Well, Foley just stops the Magna handball. And the numbers around the ball, the Ds. We haven't seen enough of this from the Demons this year, this aggression, this desire, and this want. And they're going to thirst for the contest. That's the thing. I mean, they haven't been put away. They believe probably at this stage that maybe they've taken uh, you know, Richmond's best hit, and they're still in the game. Cochin quickly intercepted by Garland. His kick doesn't go anywhere really that he wanted it to, but Turlett can get a hand on it but can't control it. You can talk all you like about the physical part of the game and the game plans, all that sort of stuff, and when still this game gets played above the shoulders. Well, this looks a very different side that got pantsed by the Suns last weekend, doesn't it? And Jamar belting the, yeah, for sure, belting the ball forward. Jackson has been front and centre on a lot of the skirmishes today. Tringo missing the target and a boundary throw inside. So we saw a big flare up at the end of the second quarter at half time, and it's it's bubbling again as we're getting close to three quarter time here. And one goal either way would make a massive difference. It's either going to be a four goal, three goal, or two goal game at three quarter time. McKenzie. And there's a bit of payback, I think, because McKenzie's been getting into Delidio a fair bit, and then Martin gave him a, to Davey. Not sure if that was a great handball, because he's a left footer. And it put him on the wrong side, but that is a good, dangerous kick. You like those? And then Strauss to Dawes. And this is, well, this is the biggest kick of the match so far by anybody. This is what the a big one. What a difference it makes, though, if you've got somebody that can kick a ball like Aaron Davey. Pulled the trigger on a difficult kick into the centre of the ground. It just opened up all that space for the forwards on the other side of the ground and Dawes led beautifully into it. Well, Davey and Dawes have been the most important players, I think, for Melbourne today. And if Dawes could slot this, they'll have six between them. Not coming back. So he's just going for that little bit extra distance. But, look, his numbers won't say he's had a great game, but I think he's had a big influence today, Dawes. So quickly it comes. Vickery got the sit. Not quite the mark, and Jamar cast oh. in the right. He's, he's, oh. <laughs> that was a try. I think if you mark me or you're in the demon coaching box at the moment, so you're thinking about making sure that you can keep a handle on Cochin for the rest of this game and Delidio too, because I mean, at some stage you would think that both those players are going to find a little bit more ball. Cochin just takes on the other skipper and just dishes it off to Martin. So Cochin to Martin. We'll see that a lot over the years. And to Vickery. And now to Grigg. Well, this is just a one-on-one -on -one now. Important this for Ellis. Lost his feet. Matt Jones kept his now. Ellis jumps up quickly. And he makes amends. Can he get rid of it? He's bottled up. No prior, no prior opportunity. Well, Tim, you spoke about uh, late in the second term, the tackle count going the way 
Well, the wrong way for the Demons, 19 to 6 it was just a couple of minutes ago in this third term, the way of the Ds. Yep, they're still in there. They're, they're, they're still battling away in the contest. Hunting in packs at the moment, Melbourne, aren't they? A lot of Tigers around that particular ball, so almost three-quarter time. Inside 50s have just eight. started to even up a little bit too, Thanks, 28 mate. to Sorry, 36, Thank so... You. Thank you. They've had their fair share of the ball this quarter. So a couple of times we've felt like Richmond has been so close to putting Melbourne away. And Jackson's kick forward. Revolt waiting, waiting, waiting. Turning his man. It's a race against the clock. And Jack puts it through. He's a man for the big occasion. His timing was perfect. He's kicked three, takes the lead in the Coleman right here and now. And Richmond lead at three-quarter time, a sensational finish to the third quarter. It's the Tigers, 86 to the Demons, 64. Well, Tim, timing's everything in footy, and this was just massive for the Tigers right on the death at three-quarter time. It was just a bit of jack magic, wasn't it? So little time left on the clock. It was a clearance win from Jackson again. He's been unattended on a number of occasions this afternoon and Jack just finished it off beautifully and didn't he love it as he went into the huddle and a lot of momentum for the Tigers into that three-quarter time huddle. Uh, Lingy, you've been down near Melbourne. What do they have to do to stay in this? Well, they've got to keep taking the game on, Bruce. You saw in, towards the end of that quarter there, Aaron Davey was able to back his leg through the middle of the ground and created the shot at goal for Chris Dawes. They've got to do that now. There's no point going safe. There's no point going wide. Throw caution to the wind. Take the game on. They've played with a bit of confidence today already. Keep on going. You never know what could happen. It's only 22 points. A couple of goals early on this quarter. Richmond might get a little bit spooked. And who knows? It'll be a great win if they get over the line tonight. No, good point. And, uh, well, it's really important for Melbourne, as you say, that they do stay close here. Richmond have got a massive game. We know that on Saturday night, the Dreamtime game against Essendon. They've taken a long time to shrug off Melbourne today. Have they done it? Well, it's a good lead. It's a 22-point lead. And do Melbourne believe they can win? I mean, that's the other part of this, too. I mean, they've, you know, they've had a miserable season. Are they thinking now, OK, we've played three strong quarters of footy? You know, do they have another gear to go to? Are they prepared to put the work in and take Richmond right to the line? When you're bereft of confidence, everything seems so difficult, doesn't it? It does. It does. And, uh, you know, that victory seems so far away. So the final act of the afternoon's theatre and the Tigers, they kicked three of the last four in the third term. They lead this by 22 points. Jones for the Ds, quickly forward. Morris, a fist, but it favours the Demons. Taps got wide. Ellis, he's been simply sensational this afternoon. And then to Morris, who gets the Tigers out of trouble. So Ellis, he's up to 29 touches for one goal straight. His previous best, Bruce, was 25. That's right, against Frio over in that famous match on a Friday night in Perth this year. Jack copping one high there too. So Oren Stevenson, Jones, a little give meant for McKenzie. Shark by Foley, Jackson couldn't quite take it. Edwards could and then Foley gets amongst it again with Trengo. He's got a bit of work to do, doesn't he, Foley? He missed a lot of footy, yeah. but sort of still playing his way back in AFL. He's had a strange career, hasn't he? I mean, he's just been so unlucky with injuries. He's had a couple of years where he's hardly played. Another one or two years where he's been close to All-Australian. Trip, Daniel Jackson. So Jackson's been very good today, and he's used the ball generally pretty well, and Cochin has gone forward at the start of the quarter. Gets a free off Garland. This is one of the great things that... Richmond have got to, when you think of the future, that the Cochins, Martins and Deledios can all go forward. They're yeah. all goal-kicking forwards, yeah. or they can kick goals from the midfield. Yeah, and they're dangerous forwards, aren't they? Yeah, because they can play you tall be, enough. That's right, you wouldn't be afraid to isolate either of those guys at full forward too. He's had a good match, he's had a good year, he hasn't had a great year, and he hasn't kicked a goal this year. And that's probably the reason he hasn't had a great year. The best midfielders kick goals, and Cochin just puts it across. Lingy, we... Runner up in the brown low behind Job last year, but where do you think Cotchard's at right now? I mean, he hasn't absolutely sparkled this year, has he? No, you're right, Bruce. Uh, certainly very, very good and yeah. very, very dangerous. But I think to take that step to the next level, where he probably was last year, uh, was by kicking goals and being really damaging. If he can do that, he just goes to the absolute elite of the competition. And he's capable of that, and I'm sure he'll do it before the year's out. So Delidio, he and Cochin have shared the best and fairest between the last few years. And 
Howe just takes one of those strong marks this time in the defensive 50 for the D's. I mean, that's not quite as spectacular as is uh, all the marks that we normally see, but degree of difficulty, that is right up there with all of them. That was an incredible mark. Courageous and also being able to execute it really well done. Well, he's a victim of his own success, How? Yeah, normally if somebody else did that, we'd be carrying on, but uh, that's just pretty boring by him. <laughs> I mean, Revolt was the other that got the best and fairest splitting, Delidio and Cochin, but they seem to be the prime movers at the moment, and Revolt on track for a Coleman, Bruce. He's leading it at the moment. Yeah, he's uh, just one in front of Kennedy with a, a bit of time to maybe increase that. So Evans, it's getting late for the Demons, but Dawes not quite. Well, Rance ran into Deledio, who had been speaking about, and then Jetta underneath it all. He just knocks it wide. McKenzie's kept it in. Jones can't. So Melbourne with a chance from a stoppage. Gorn, but Jackson has been very good in the clearances today. Held up. And can Melbourne create something here? They they need the first goal. We know that. They've got to get the first goal in this turn. They, they've got to kick six goals, you reckon, to win this match. They're training by about four at the moment. Richmond are going to score. We know that. Jones in hard. Oh, well done, Edwards. Lovely little touch to Foley. Good kick. And I think vickery has been terrific today. He's been a bit wasteful in front of goal but he's an athlete isn't he when you see him in full flight he's great to watch he's had more score involvements today Vickery than anybody else on the ground Grigg went back to Rance Rance wide Chaplin off that step Ellis real breakout game for him he's a fantastic young prospect in fact the two teenagers for Richmond are probably best and second best today for the Tigers and that's saying something there's been a lot of good players today. I'm talking about Floston and also Ellis. So Rance from Chaplin, and now they might be out. Morris is away. He's got a paddock in front of him. Might just take a bounce. He does now. He's going to get support too. He just cruises through the wing over the top to White. And he might go back to Morris here. He does. He'll get held up momentarily by Davey. And now to White. He kicked that wonderful goal against the Dockers, which... Almost got them home. Vickery, not quite. Still dangerous territory. Nahas, he's good in this sort of spot. Martin's brilliant normally. And he's got three for the afternoon. Two in the third and one in the last. We spoke about Cochin and Revolt and Deledio. Here's the other member. Oh, yeah. No doubt, uh, Hayne. No. no, he's a great talent. You wonder what he might be. I mean, at the moment... The concern that they have for him is his engine. You know, he just doesn't have the great endurance capacities that some of the other midfielders in the competition has. So, you know, whether or not they can just slowly build that up over a period of time because you just wonder, you know, what sort of a weapon he'll be. So Tim's just talking about Martin, who's up to 10 goals for the year three today. Talking about his engine now, is that his age or... Is I think it's a bit of both. Physiology. Think, well, it can be a combination of the two, but you can certainly improve your endurance throughout the course of your career. I mean, that gets back to your work rate. So Melbourne now facing a massive climb. Evans out of the centre. Hooley's been good again today. And Taps got in a boundary throw in. So how ruthless will Richmond be here in the last 20 minutes? And on the other hand, can Melbourne hang in? Have they got enough hunger in them to walk off this ground with some pride today? Because they've played with pride throughout the day, but they could get beaten by 10 goals from here, or they could lose by a couple, or they could snatch something. That's the most unlikely scenario of the three right now. It's either you think a 10-goal win to Richmond or a 2- or 3-goal win. But it's interesting how Mark Neal has had to lower his expectations about this group, though. When he came in, he said he wanted them to be the hardest side in the competition to play against. And you know, now he's had to look at sort of tackles and things like that, just sort of set them some small targets each and every game. That's Cochin at his best when he does that. Runs and weaves and creates. King's in a dangerous spot. Well played, Garland. He's got good balance, Garland. And that's not a bad kick. He gives Howe a chance. And he doesn't need much more than half a chance. The one over the top, McKenzie, who's put under pressure, is asked to write a very tough essay. And he was pinged, but he got away with it so quickly oh. wide. Well, Edwards got a paw on it. And Martin just gathers. He'll go over the top, and White's got speed. Might just have to use Martin again. No, over the top to Edwards, who's got a bit of space. He can go over the top to him now. The Tigers have got a 
heap of options. Briggs got the leading player in Nahas. It's just that one errant kick, isn't it? Leads to a turnover. Everyone moves up the field. They're all out of position. An open field for the Tigers to operate in. So four kicks for the afternoon and just the one goal won't score here. Drops short. Nahas ends up with a victory on the end of it but pushed out and sell up. And 50. The free kick was right. I mean, it, was, it was a full-blooded two-handed push before the ball arrived. So he couldn't have had a problem with that. He just had a little bit of a problem with his own. Just watch this again. I mean, there's the, this is the one-on-one -on -one drill. He goes back to Seller here. Just bang, pushes him out of the way. Well, we've read plenty about it, haven't we, during the week. Can't push, bump, block, or hold. It was in there somewhere. Deledio just weighs things up well, further afield. Runner. Line, Richmond free kick. So this bloke just has knocked up getting the ball this afternoon, hasn't he? He's up to 33 now. You know you're having a good day, Tim, when you're Brandon Allison, whatever, he's six foot, but he's taking marks against the two Ruckman, you think. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm having a good day today. So 33 and a goal for Ellis as the Tigers continue to work, and space for White here. He's so pacey, White, he just goes in the revolt direction. Frawley again just in revolt's back pocket. That's the next challenge for Ellis, though. You put a target on your back when you have 33, don't you? You've got plenty of coaches the next, yeah, yeah, doing the, the work. Game, it's yeah. Essendon next weekend, Saturday night football. So so Vickery trying to break a tackle or two. Oh, well done, Jackson down low. And the McKenzie gets him high. Go through. He's combative, isn't he, Jackson? Sure is. Trying to wind it up to Lidio. Chaplin. White's been so busy. And that's a really good sub goal. You love that when the sub can do that. Bill for Matty White, I mean, he's just one of those guys, he doesn't get a lot of opportunities, but he's a really handy man yeah. to have, I reckon, because he, he can impact straight away to him. That's right, he's a, he, he is the type of bloke that can give you some energy when they come onto the ground as well, and he's got terrific speed, he's got the capacity to run and open up play with his run, mm. um, and they're the sorts of blokes that you want to come on as a sub because they can drive the, 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 the rest of the team. Just watching that set up again, you know, Chaplin over to White, who's been really busy. I mean, he's been working extremely hard to get on the end of it. So the Tigers, five of the last six now, and the game high lead. Free kick. Ritz, Hold the jump up. Just here. Yeah, right now. Turn back on. So it's been pretty much all Tigers from about six or seven minutes to go in the third term. Long ball inside 50 again. Oren Stevenson, this time the target. King, as he always is, just terrier-like. He has a second attempt. Foley, smothered kick. Jones, Frawley, Turlick. And now to Magna. Backwards, Seller under pressure. Jackson didn't quite get him done. He's been good today, done. Kicked a couple. And he gets held up by Martin, who's got three of his own goals for the Tigers. Jack just Thanks, taking Magna. a breather. Just thinking back to that goal late in the third. From 45 around the corner on the left, it was something else, wasn't it? It sure was. It made a big difference in it. All that momentum. In fact, if this is a... Just drop the ball, put it down on the ground. That was a really good decision there. Jake King actually Jake. played for the free kick there. And as soon as he felt the contact, he fell forward, trying to calm the umpire into a free kick. And in the end, the umpire said, OK, that's holding the ball. I've given you an opportunity. So the D's to Evans. Never think about Frawley versus... Uh, Revolt today, Lingy, and also uh, Tim. I mean, right now, who would you give the points? I mean, Jack's kicked his three. We talked about it pre-match. Lingy, you go first. Revolt versus Frawley. Oh, I think Frawley's been terrific. Given how much uh, ball's been down the Richmond end, I think he's done a really good job to keep Jack Revolt to three goals uh, with that amount of entries is uh, is a good job. D to Morris, back to Floston. We've talked a lot about how well he's played. That one just slightly too tall for Hulu. And then Garland. Well done, Garland. Just brushing aside. Dave, he's had a really good match, I feel. To Nicholson. Now they build. Jed has been quiet. And that's OK. Dawes has kicked his couple. Goes back to Jones. But he can't get the right angle, Jones. And then that sloppy, lazy kick. And Gorn takes the mark. 60 metres out and goes short. And finds Nicholson, who's got a long leg. And, oh, Nicholson chopped off. 
Can he get away from Chaplin? Can he back turn? Good tackle. He's been good for Austin. He has been so good, hasn't he? Great tackle. So the Tigers again, with so much space, they seem to have a lot of space in the last 15 minutes or so. The D's might just be getting a little tired. The Tigers full of run. The Lidio, back he goes to Hawley. And that man again, Ellis, and over the top is Morris if he chooses to go in that direction. Could work from doors then. I mean, he worked so hard as a key forward. He worked his backside off to get right out there on the wing to pick up Morris. So the two teenagers, Ellis, 34, and Floston, 21. Now to Delidio, had 32 last week. To Stevenson and to Grigg, and again, it was good delivery. Couldn't be completed, though, the transaction. Koch and picks it up. Quick gift to Delidio, and he gets it back again. Goes back inside, Jamar On the left boot, Martin. Big fly, Revol. Almost, and Frawley again. Last line. They're not out of trouble yet, the Ds. A little give from Strauss over the top to Howe. He's spent a lot of time in the back half for the Demons today. He's had to be there, and he's going to have to do more in a moment. He's going to come back in. Chaplin, it's Vickery on the lead through the hand. So now it's up to Nahas. He just gets through Howe, but can't get away from Garland. Gee, what some about this? Hey, Lingy, that might have changed your mind, but it has been a good duel, hasn't it? Yeah, that would have absolutely changed your mind. <laughs> Gee, you're easy, easy to convince, Lingy. They nearly, uh, they nearly paid a mark similar to that to, well, they did pay a mark similar to that to Gary Ablett over Gary Pert, wasn't it? That almost held it as long. In the other pocket it was. It was in, you're not questioning one of the great marks of all time, are you? <laughs> Certainly not, mate. I think I was in the crowd that day and I thought it was a mark all the way. Thanks, Jack. Thankfully, it was paid, but uh, no, it's been a great duel between Floyd and Revolt. It has, and Revolt, yeah, yeah. Both step aside. You yeah, expected that fine. coming to the game today, that those two were going to fight it out. So, Jamar in front of Vickery, Edwards at the bottom, King, McKenzie, Deledio. King can't quite get out, and then trying to get out Cochin, and he sort of does to Grigg in the back. Sure. Well, not paid, and then Trengo tries to turn him. Richmond are trying to put Melbourne completely to the sword here, but to the D's credit, they're hanging around and that ball not getting out. delidio has got busy in this last quarter too. He's at 16 disposals at three quarter time up to 23 now. Square. Nick, watch the goal square. Going up. Just going back to Frawley and Revolt. They're going to be doing it for a long time, aren't they? Still just 24 years of age. It's like that cartoon. Morning, Frank. <laughs> hey, James. <laughs> Today, Jack. And they go at it for a couple of hours. I think there's a lot of respect already that's been built up between those two. Flossen to Delidio. Yeah, no, it's good stuff. I mean, remember the times we've gone and watched Kerry play and Jakovic. Well, it really gets you going. Strauss. Dawes. We just waited for it. Rance. He's done that a few times too, yep. Becker. Yep. Agreed. Back to Morris. Gee, Flossen, what a game he's played. You're going to give a top four, Tim. I'm, I'm guessing that... No, I'm not going to I'm not going to preempt you. It's up to you. As the, the Tigers go forward again with a beautiful kick from Hurley. And now it's Ellis again, inside 50. Uh, just a little short for Martin in the end. Revolt and King, they're the usual suspects, aren't they? Inside 50, certainly in the last half, just lurking around ominously. It's just one thing with Dawes, you know, just that final two steps at the ball, he just seems to relax. He's just got to work a little bit harder. He could have had another four or five marks had he done that. Martin tries to bulldoze his way through, gets it in King's hands, and then... An ugly sort of a ball. Vickery to Chaplin on the right boot. It's got everything, has it? It has. A rare goal for Troy Chaplin. And well, as a Tiger, it's his first. He's only kicked 11 in his career. It's his 147th game. And he started way back when in 2004. And... He has won this afternoon as a tag. There was some celebration there too. He enjoyed that. Was it on his right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was on his right <laughs> leg, which is his wrong. First it was probably goal, first the on his right leg, maybe. Have a look at this for a celebration. You reckon that doesn't mean something to him to push forward and kick a goal in this late stage of the game? So, Chapman gets amongst them, and the Tigers have put the D's away. Cotchin out of the centre. His work rate's phenomenal. Oh, how? All over, done and takes a thrilling mark. You just wish he was able to take it at the other end, but he's uh, had to go back. That kick out wide. Magnus fallen over. Not a good thing to do. 
Edwards has got him, and then Magna gets it out. Trengo just belts it out to Dunn, and then Dunn to Jones, and then Jones running out of room, and I think he got the best result possible. So you talk about highlight reels. The end of his career, he's going to need a hard drive just to sort of capture it all. It's week in, week out, isn't it? No doubt about he's that. He's such a pure form. Oh. So Jama and Oren again, Nicholson. Just gets away in the end. Doesn't find his man, Edwards, to Ellis. And then suddenly they're forward again. This time Jackson just hacks it forward, but Howe takes a simpler mark and goes short to a man who's been good this afternoon in Davy. He's come back into this side and he's been influential. And today, 3-1, tap Scott. Gee, he's good with the ball, Davy, isn't he? Like, he rarely ever misses a teammate with the ball. And they're not safe kicks either, Tim. I mean, they're in dangerous spots, which yep. then open it up for you. I mean, he's getting towards the end of what's been a, a very good career with some yep. downs. But And here's this fantastic pal, Mark. I mean, he's a brilliant aerialist. One of the real greats over the last two years. I mean, he's just superb. The good goal today. Dunn's got a couple. And then belted down for Stevenson. Just a lingy. Um, we're a Richmond act compared to, you know, they've got Essendon next week, and, and just the D's, a word on them as well. Yeah, well, I think Richmond, uh, they're certainly improving. We know that. We've spoken about that many times. But if they're going to take that next step into the into the bracket of the uh, the top teams, they need the players today who've stood up. Edwards, Alice, Matty White, Sean Grigg, Foley, and Flossum as the ball nearly hits me in the head there, boys. Sorry about that. Uh, if they get those players standing up on top of their absolute A-graders like Martin and Delidio and Cochin, then they become a really good team. And in got to say about Melbourne, they've had a crack today. They've uh, they've come out and done exactly what they had to do. They just don't have the class to finish off their work. They do a lot of hard work, but then cost themselves with, with bad turnovers. But they've certainly had a crack today. I don't think the fans could be too disappointed with their attitude. So, Tim, do you feel they've taken a small step forward, Melbourne, today or not? Yeah, no, I do. I do. I think they've actually stayed in a game for a lot longer than what we've seen in previous occasions. So, Look, it, it, it is just baby steps for Melbourne at the moment. And it is 30 scoring shots to 14, isn't it? Yep. But they've made the most of their opportunities as Jackson goes back. So the Tigers will entrench themselves in this top eight tonight. Bruce, you do want to see Melbourne, though, now finish the game off, I reckon. If you're a fan, you'd say, you'd say they've really had a crack. They've done as much as they could possibly do. But there's six or seven minutes to go now in the game. Finish it off and do the hard work right to the very end. And then you leave the game with a bit of heart that they're uh, they're certainly having a crack. No, for sure. You'd love another goal or two, wouldn't you? And they might be able to create something here. A half chance might become just a bit more here. Doors on the end of it. Gives... And now Bale, he went searching, he gave it to his skipper, and over the top, Evans will kick the easiest of goals. Lee's points well made. I mean, the D's, they did lead at quarter time, and they were within seven points at half time. The Tykes had that good end of the third term, and they led it by 22, but it would be disappointing if it blew right out. So it's 35 points as we stand, and Still plenty of time for the Tigers to press forward and not only entrench themselves inside the eight, but grab some badly needed percentage in a competitive season. So the next four to come. Lingy, I might run you over these. Essendon, West Coast away, by Adelaide at the MCG. It's a searching three out of the four, isn't it? Yeah, I think th those three games there will tell us very clearly where Richmond's at this year. If they're a genuine finals team, they win all three of those. If they're just going to be that team that's thereabouts again, uh, around that ninth, dare I say, to the Richmond supporters, they'll drop those ones. So done. So the next month, defining for them. Dunn whacks the ball away. Greg couldn't quite hang on. Good stuff by Jones, and then maybe a leg on Evans, and then White puts the tackle on and the ball up. Good tackle, no chance, though. So, Essen and then West Coast away, then a bye, and then Adelaide at the MCG for Richmond. Their next month of footy. They'll be 5-3 and three tonight. Off the ground, Delidio, and you've got to go back to 2005 since they've won five of their first eight. They're actually 6-2. and two. That's good attendance for today. That's 40,000 just about. That's a big turn up. Richmond have actually averaged 70,000 in their four games at the MCG, but this is Melbourne today. And they're not the biggest ticket in town right now. But Richmond are going to have 
their best start to a season since 2005 when we talk about the first couple of months. So Edwards, a brilliant handball. Jackson, courageously done, and then a good smother. Back to Seller. Seller's 21st game today for Richmond. That's that's of Melbourne. That's exactly how many played for the Crows in a lot more years as the D's work it out. Bale through the middle. Davey, a bit of space, nothing forward of the ball. So he's going to have to wait here. Taps got his only option. He oh, screamed from the wing. He had there. to sit and wait. I do, Tringove's actually been better in the second half uh, today too. There's been some promising signs with Jack. A little ball over the top to Bale who continued to run. Thank you. To your left, uh, Taps got exposed that kick from Davey. I mean, it hit the mark, but it just left his whole rib cage exposed there to Morris, who 15 gone. is not the bloke you want to expose your rib cage to either. So, to get it back under five goals for the D's, Tigers by 22 at three quarter time. So, the Tigers have won the quarter and Bale just offline. So, 39,000, as Bruce said, a good crowd and a good spirited performance from the D's for the best part of three quarters and it's just got away a little bit late. So Delidio to himself and then Long, or oh, Howe was chopped off there by King, that's a good decision. Straight back Jeremy Howe, straight back. Jake took his running, which is not a pretty smart thing to do because you know he's going to fly and probably take a mark and was able to chop him off. So yeah. how uncertain here, what does he do? Well he switched the big one back to Strauss, and then Strauss has got to go wide. Frawley waited, he sort of teased Revolt there. Stay there, Jack. So Revolt on 27 goals, only in one season has he actually had more goals than this after eight rounds, and that was not in his Coleman season. So he's on a song to kick 70 or 80 goals this year at Revolt. So the next four for the Ds. They've got Fremantle away, that's next Sunday night. Hawthorne, oh gee, Collingwood, and then a bite. Collingwood, of course, the Queen's birthday. Gee, that's a, a horrible look to it, isn't it? It really is. I mean, they're going to be rank outsiders in all of those games. Bachelor, R Davey. Gee, Edwards took that brilliantly. And then through Seller. And back it goes. Mitch Clark is the one. You'd love Mitch Clark just slotted right back now. I think he's going to be a while still. I think two of the brightest things to come out of this game for Melbourne is A, Dawes and his form and the fact that he moves and provides a target and his willingness to work and also the form of Davey and we've spoken about him a number of occasions. And this bloke's got free in the last quarter as well, Cochin alongside Deledio. Such a complete footballer, isn't he? Cochin gives it to Ellis who's had 38 touches this afternoon. And Martin, the target, the Ds, they should be able to work it through here. How to Gull and then over the top. This might just sit a long time. D charges at Bale. Desperate to get back on the football. And in the end, to new old draw. Ellis, what an afternoon. 38 touches. He's been a sub a few times this year, but 25, 18 and 23 coming into this. And he has just had... Well, simply the best afternoon of AFL football he's ever had. I tell you what, he's taken a couple of scalps too. We'll talk about that in a moment. Delidio banging the ball in forward to centre-half forward. The contest there. Martin involved and then on the up Turley. Gets to Howe. He's played in the back half for much of this quarter. Evans, who kicked the goal in the last term, switches it. Gets it to Jones. Matt Jones and then that little kick. Dangerous, but Mark taken and good give by Nicholson. Jones running hard, a couple of bounces, he can go a bit further than that. No one's come to him, needs to deliver. Tringo, who Tim's talked about, he's got better as the game's gone on. And that's a good kick off the boot to Tapscott. Just keep that thought, um, Hamish, about 38, remind me, because I might have time here. Martin's best ever, 35. Delidio's best ever, 36. Cochin's best ever, 38. So Ellis has got himself into rare company here today. He's taken a couple of his... Uh, illustrious teammates and he's got level with Cochin in terms of career high so Taps got with a long 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 point it's a good kick and a behind so it's been a real breakout for Ellis today 19 years of age and he really is going to be something here's Jackson tucks it under the arm and now orchestrates and kicks to Edwards you mentioned Delidio and Cochin their high numbers there, their numbers today Delidio 
27, Cochin 26 after the week off. He had that hyperextended knee against the Dockers and then a quiet week following against the Cats. Spoke to him during the week, said on Tuesday he did a year sec six primary visit and got a lot of the football in a lunchtime kick, so he's feeling good about the knee and it's nice to see him back this afternoon. Morris, he's had a good afternoon as well and inside he goes to White, who since coming onto the ground has made an impact. And again to Morris. So much space the Tigers in this last term. Speaking of space, Revolt, he led Frawley to the ball and a rare occasion where Jack just had it. Got the last goal before three-quarter time on the side. He's about to try and do the same thing at the end of the match. Well, this to make it four. He came into this in pretty accurate form. 12-1 from the last four rounds. This afternoon, he has 3-2. And it will be right on the siren. But sadly, it's not the way he'd like to finish. But... For the Tigers, it's a good afternoon. They're in the eight, and they're in there with a bit more percentage. goals 10. Lingy, I know you've made a beeline for Ellis. Not that it's important. He's actually had more disposals in a game than Cochin, Delidio and Martin today. 39, one shy of Foley. Uh, not, not a bad effort at all whatsoever. 39 touches today. You feeling alright? Leather poisoning? You okay? No, I'm feeling really good. I just uh, knew that I've got a big tank, so I knew if I kept running all day that I could... You know, the boys would give it to me, and you know, they did so. It's a good team effort. It was a really hard game. Melbourne kept on coming at you, didn't they? They, did, they certainly didn't make it easy, but credit to the boys that you actually were able to break them open eventually and get the win. Yeah, they copped a bit of stick during the week. You know, the missed tack was not going hard enough, so we knew they were going to come out and try and get the four-quarter effort. But credit to the boys, you know, this last quarter, we stuck to the team plan, went harder, tackled more, and got the ball forward. So it's a good team effort. Do you just love playing in that midfield with the likes of Delidio, Koch, and Martin? Just some fantastic players, you can learn a lot from them. Oh yeah, it's bloody awesome, you know, Koch and Leeds probably two of the best midfielders that we play with and can't wait to play with them for the next few years, so it's awesome. Well, well done mate, great job today. Thanks Great mate. He's got a bit of spunk, the boy, hasn't he, Tim? <laughs> I mean, he's got a huge career, it's going to be interesting to see just where he's at. And for Melbourne, I, I reckon they can hang out onto this, I mean, put their head up a bit high. As we go back to you, Lee, back to you, Cameron. Oh. This year playing out of the MCG, certainly the best game for the club with something like 25 possessions. You must be happy. Yeah, definitely happy. Yeah. It's great to see all the Tiger faithful out here as well. So unreal. And we were just chatting with Brandon Ellis. There's, there's a group of young players through the midfield now who, who are providing a lot of support for, for Trent Cochin and Brett Delidio as well. Yeah, no, definitely. Brandon actually said to me at half time, just keep looking for each other because we kept in it. It's like half time, so no, it's good. I think he had 39, so played an awesome game. You've always got to look after each other. You just, you just love it. You just love being at, at Richmond and, and the opportunity to play AFL footy. Yeah, definitely loving every minute of this. Well, you're sensational, mate. Well done. Great job. I reckon, I reckon Lingy might get his order.